<laughs> okay, chat. Right. This is not a normal Monday night stream. Okay. Normally, I'm sat at my desk. Yeah. Painting some stuff. <laughs> We're trying something very different okay, tonight right. for a couple of reasons. We have got the amazing, okay, the beautiful, the stunning. Mr. Yeah. The War Hipster here in the studio. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, and so because he's here, you normally, yeah, 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 so he normally do Me Time Mondays, right? Yeah, yeah. So he normally does Me Time Mondays. However, and so because he's here, however, today, today at least, yeah. you're all the way down here, so you can't do Me Time Mondays. I'm just watching Carl Russell with headphones in the corner, looking really confused. Because I can hear both. Yeah, okay, so basically, it's because I'm watching, if you close down the video on Josh's channel on Google, you will no longer get the delay, the echo. Oh, sweet silence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're trying something new. Basically, what I wanted to do, because he was sacrificing a stream to come here, is I wanted to put this stream out to both channels. So we've used a brand new piece of software, Restream.io, which we've never used before, which allows us to push to different YouTube channels. And there's loads of things it changes. Yes. It's been a bit of a nightmare. But we think we're live to both, and we think we're OK. And we think everything's good. Carl's giving me a big thumbs up. YouTube's throwing errors at us. Everything's getting upset. But Carl's giving us a thumbs up, so we should be fine. Tonight, specifically, is about Age of Sigmar. Tomorrow night will also be about Age of Sigmar. I've told you loads already on our channel, at least, because we're currently live to both. Uh, don't worry, we're not replacing 40k with Age of Sigmar, but it's Mr. The Hipster's favourite game. We're trying to get into Age of Sigmar, so we thought we'd use this opportunity to play yes. in some fantasy realms. Tonight's not a battle report, okay? We're going to have a hard stop of probably two hours, around half past nine. And what we're going to do tonight is we're just going to try and learn between us the rules of Age of Sigma. He knows a, bit, a lot more about it, actually, than I do. I know nothing whatsoever. So if you've never played Age of Sigma before, and you're looking at getting into this game, because Age of Sigma 4 is coming later this year, Games Workshop showed us that at the Adepticon Reveals, this might be a reasonable stream to sit and watch and go back to and, and sort of re-watch as we try and learn the game rules. Because typically our audience, at least, is 100% near enough 40k yeah. focused, and some people also play other games, right? So we're not going to get to turn five and determine a winner tonight. But we are going to try and do that tomorrow night when yes. you play Joe. Yes. And tomorrow night we're also going to stream out to both channels. Yes, and hopefully we'll fix any uh, issues that we might have. I, th I mean, again, Carl's give us a thumbs up, so we might be okay. All right? So instead of just doing a hobby stream, or we were going to sit and do a Liam and Josh show, we thought we'd do this instead of push it out to both. What was the, what was the wobblies for? Nothing. It's fine. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Kyle. Don't do that to me. We're very anxious right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us on this Monday evening. You wonderful people. If you're from our channel, thank you for always turning up at 7.30 on Monday evenings. You're amazing. If you're from Mr. The Hipster's channel, welcome, you wonderful people. Welcome to the Great Hall. This is my humble abode. This is. We are doing this stream tonight. We're doing a interview podcast show tomorrow daytime that will be pre-recorded that will go up on the channel later. And then we're going to do another stream tomorrow night to both channels, which will be Joe with his... Vampires, what are they called? Soul Blight Grave Thank Lords. you. Vampires <laughs> versus your Stormcast Eternals. Yes, yes. Old fashioned Space Marines. Yeah. Rather than doing death versus death, because I thought maybe that would be a little bit boring for everybody to watch. I have no idea. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> no idea at all. Uh, if you are new here, please make sure you go ahead and smash all those magical YouTube buttons for us. Hit that like if you enjoy the content. Smash subscribe if you haven't already. And you can hit that bell notification icon if you want to be notified every single time we go live or drop a new video. Alternatively, you could become a member of the Great Hall, in which case Discord lets you know every single time we go live or schedule a video or drop a new video. And it's significantly more efficient than the YouTube notification bell is. So if you are in the Great Hall, do you have Discord that does the same thing? I have a Discord and it does not do the same thing because I don't know how to do that. I can, I can show you. You can show me. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're a professional and I, I'm an absolute rank amateur. <laughs> Subscriber numbers wouldn't show that. <laughs> right, you wonderful people. Uh, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to play Age of Sigma. I have a rule book. Yep. Josh has a rule book. Yep. I have a, a battle tome. Yes. Josh has a battle tome. I do. And we're going to play. So we don't have a mission. We don't have... Um, we sort of have a mission. We, well, we do have a mission, but we haven't made... Like, this isn't a battle report format. Yes. So I don't want you to think it's going to go turn one, turn one, turn two. Like, that's not what we're doing tonight. We're just here to enjoy ourselves, talk to you guys, try and answer any questions. I'm probably going to have loads of questions. Yes. So even in deployment, I got confused. Because I was like, because <laughs> you said, oh, you deploy first, so you go first. What? <laughs> yeah, it's whoever gets their um, models down first, goes first. Oh. Well, I have less. I have, yeah. <laughs> 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 There's a brand new thing for me straight away. Um, um, yeah, it's not the... There's not an immediate, there's not a first roll off. Yeah. There is roll off for priority in every turn henceforth, though. That's how the double turn stuff That's happens. how the double turn can happen. I don't like getting double turned. Wet turned, teamed. 
Anyway, uh, if you are watching from our channel, if you're from the Great Hall and you don't know who this beautiful human being is, we've raided him a few times in the past. He's been involved in loads of vagin. Uh, this is Mr. The Hipster. So he has a channel which is tagged in the video title, right? Mm -hmm. If you click on that little tag, it should take you over to his channel. If you haven't already, go over there very quickly, hit that subscribe button. Josh, I, I've said this to you off camera already, and I'll be very open about this on camera, and I'll probably mention it again tomorrow on the interview, but Josh is the reason why I started enjoying painting tutorials again. It's, it's genuine, because I yeah. got to a point where I got sick and fed up of going to a painting tutorial, and they go, right, so we're gonna show you how to paint this space marine in four easy steps. Step one, 18 zenithal highlight layers with an airbrush. Yes. Like, oh, that's not one step then, is it? Yeah, I mean, that's, that, <laughs> that was, I, so when I, when I, I've been doing Warhammer for a long time in my life. Yeah. Long time. Uh, and I, as we all do, take breaks away. And one of them was when I was in, I was in London and I hadn't done it for 18 months. And I came back to the hobby and I was like, ooh, I want to paint some tanks. So I went on YouTube, discovered that YouTube was a thing for, for Warhammer content. Because I thought, <laughs> I thought, I still had that mindset from when I was uh, like 16. 15, 16, and I was like, there's only me and the six mates that I play this with that actually know what Warhammer is. So there isn't going to be any YouTube content, but there was. And I was like, I'm going to look up how to paint a Space Marine Rhino. Didn't find a single one that didn't require an <laughs> airbrush. Brush. Yeah. And I was like, I was going through, I'd just been through a breakup and I didn't want to spend loads of money on it. So I was like, I'm not going to buy a 300 pound airbrush. And then when I made the channel like three or four years later, I was like, I'm never going to make it. I never wanted anyone to be in a position where if they pick up one of my videos, they suddenly go, I have to learn an entirely completely different new skill type of thing to actually do the thing that you're trying mm. to. Because you, you always kind of, I think the thing with Warhammer often with painting tutorials is you get a new model and you might look up how somebody else has done it. And that's, and, and that's a spur of the moment thing. Yeah. Rather than you plan in sort of six months ahead what video you're going to use to do which, when and what. So it's like you don't want to have that thing of you open up a video and you go, yeah, we're going to do. Well, I've done it before. You open up a video and then you end up ordering the things that they tell specifically like paints that you say they tell you to order. And yeah. then it gets to a point where the paints turn up and you've kind of lost interest and it's taken a while and because there's some rare, random, because every, I feel like every hobbyist painter, I say every, I feel like a lot of them seem to feel this need to use this random obscure colour you've never heard of, of just because it makes them a bit edgy over everybody else. Yeah. So what Josh typically also does, chat, is he also typically mostly, in fact, almost completely uses uh, GW paints, is from what I've seen at least. Yeah, almost entirely. The only times I won't do it is if I'm like doing something that's sort of non new GW or I'm reviewing something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, which is something that's also appealing to me because I've got tons of GW paints, mm -hmm. almost nothing of anything else. Yeah. Uh, if you, one thing I will say, if you are someone who struggles with painting or you're new to the hobby or you're getting back into the hobby, one of the reasons why the hipster tutorials are absolutely glorious is because he starts every model basically with a basic contrast paint. Now, contrast paint is a reasonably recent tool in the world of Games Workshop within the last sort of five years. Yeah. And it's phenomenal if you know how to use it right. When I first used it, I hated the stuff. As most people did, because it didn't I land couldn't, well. And the other thing was my local GW at Southampton, who are wonderful, they're all amazing people, had a, a row of like grey seared space marines. I went, here, try contrast, it looks shit. But it does look bad on space marines because it doesn't it doesn't yeah. sit nice on loads of smooth panels unless did you know how to apply it. They also hand you a medium shade brush. Probably, as well. yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's always yeah. the way. So if you want to know yeah. how to yeah. get, <laughs> yeah, <I'll say> <laughs> yes, they did. Here's, here's a medium shade brush. It's just one heavy coat and it'll look fantastic. Yeah. And it's like it, it doesn't. And um, it looked absolutely terrible. So if you want to get stuff on the tabletop relatively quickly, I would genuinely go and check out that channel first. Uh, I'm not saying because he's just here because you. I hope you all know by now. I wouldn't review a product that I wouldn't happily use myself. Um, and like this army over here, the flesh of your courts is all your own work with your contrasty paints yeah, and yeah. stuff, yeah? Yeah, there yeah. Go. So, There's time. videos for all of this. So yeah. Tons and tons thing. of content. Yeah. Anyway, tonight we're here to say thank you, wonderful people. Obviously, it's a stream. We always have a target of 100 members. And I Kyle has actually got, if you're watching on either channel, Kyle's got both chats in front of him, right? I've made his life even more difficult tonight. It's like tonight. Minority Report. Wow. <laughs> he has the hardest job on the channel anyway with producing. And now I've made it slightly more difficult because there's two chats that he's got to read. So if you decide to gift, become a member or super chat, he will capture it. Uh, but because we're going to be up at the table, he might just not choose to interrupt us. But today's a chill one. It's not a battle report. So he can just interrupt us if he needs to or wants to or just feels like it, right? Yeah. Because we're not telling you how we're playing. Because we don't, I haven't, I haven't, I'll be honest with you, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. That's fine. Good. That's fine. I don't really either. How is chat, Kyle? Are they good? Yeah, really good. 
Everyone's saying hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. The Warhorses chat. Hello, hello, Mr. Mr. The Dempsey's chat. (laughs) Hello, we are all we we are all chat. Now, this is something. uh, The reason, one of the reasons why we we had this plan. Actually, I'll be honest. We had this planned in. We started planning this in before Christmas, and the intent originally was to come and play Old World, but then um, Games Workshop's Old World releases are slightly slower than my nan. Uh, and she's been dead for over 10 years. Wow. Um, so she's really, really slow. She's quite slow. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and Joe's built the Protonian army and still and just started painting it. So that wasn't going to be realistic. Um, I'm hype about Age of Sigma. I'm actually incredibly excited about the new version that they've announced oh, coming out as well. I was pitching a tent when I was watching the, <laughs> the trailer. So we don't want to throw too much time into this version, but I do want to get a taste for it. And that's what these next two days are all about. This is an amuse bouche. Yeah, it's a starter. It's an yeah. aperitif. Yeah, just just to get your just get your wet your whistle. Yes, as they say, <laughs> I think somewhere. Mr. The, the Carl's giggling. They're cross chatting. Like they're starting in one, they're moving to the other, they're going back. I knew this would happen. <laughs> it's they're childish. Uh, yes, they're childish. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to go into some of these these super chats and some of the memberships we've gone on for already. Please do, Mr. The Kyle. So starting with War Hipster chat, uh, thank you, Tay B, for your super chat. He said, your tutorial on Magnus and the Lion helped me get grow in my hobby. Excited to learn at AOS, going to pick it up when the new spear boxes come out. Yes. yes. The lion and Magnus, that's some painting. You're a hero. <laughs> yeah, that's you're, some you're painting, Tay. Hey? absolute hero. I mean, the wings yeah. alone on Magnus is just... Yeah. The wings are the funnest part, though. I'm, I agree. They're 100% the funnest part. The lion is a... He's a, he's, he's a tricky one. He's a big space marine. He is a big one. <laughs> uh, like that, the the painting of the armor is not an easy thing to do. And no. if you feel if, if my video helped you get that done, then great. Well, especially if you try and go box art with it as well, it's quite difficult. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, going into the Liam Densey chat, Phil, thank you for the five good memberships. Big Ron, thank you for coming. A scarred member, all on his own. All by his own self. All on his own. Oh wow. Tim Shays, I think for the super chat said, Postio is a national treasure who must be protected at all costs. At all costs. At all costs. The Lord of Cinder, I can love that name by the way. Thank you for the super chat. Said, so excited to see AOS from you guys. Has anyone else thought that maybe Joe hates orcs because he talks like one? I mean, he basically is one. <laughs> if he was green, you'd think he was an orc. Yeah. He smells like an orc. <laughs> he walks around like an orc. Space like Marine. Yeah. I think he's more like a hobbit. Really? He's just, yeah. I don't even he's think quite that. A, quite a home bod, isn't more, he? more like the river folk. I mean, he eats a lot. Yeah. yeah. He's constantly snacking. Ask Kyle when he plays Call of Duty with him. Yeah. He's constantly snacking. No, I know. I'm <laughs> on the other end of it. <laughs> Mid-tier mediocre, thank you for a super chat, said, I legit just thought those were the voices in my head. All being happy about seeing AOS in this channel, because of yeah. the repetition of the voices. Stu Will, thank you for the five good memberships. Stu Will, thank you for the super chat, said, I would like to say thank you to the Mr. The War Hipster. I painted my Ragnar Black Mane over the weekend, and I watched his tutorial. I got a lot of really great tips and finished it on Sunday. My best model to date, so thank you very much. I waited for that Ragnar Blackmane model for ages. Because I loved all of the Primaris characters. And I did all of them as they came out. I didn't necessarily do videos for all of them. I hadn't started a channel when most of it had come out. But I was, I was desperate for the Ragnar model to come out. And then the pandemic hit. Mm. And it delayed Pro- Prophecy of the Wolf. I was told, right, so it was like... Your Prophecy of the Wolf box has been dispatched. And I was like, get in. That's what I'm going to be spending all that time to do. Next day. <laughs> By the way, we're all going into full lockdown. Yeah. And I got another email. Your Prophecy of the Wolf box <laughs> has been delayed <laughs> for an indefinite amount. Oh, no. And I was like, oh. Christopher Sanford, thank you for the five good memberships. Scooter, thank you for the five good memberships. Joe Cole's Only Feet, thank you for the five good memberships. And going back to the Wall Hips of the chat. Thank you, Joe Coles, only feet for the five War Hipster memberships. That's, Thank you. That's a great idea. If any of you who have gifted on my channel already are so compelled and you might have the spare change, think about heading over to Mr. The War Hipster's channel and equaling your donation. That's it's probably a bit expensive for some people. But if you can, that would be very kind of you. We're here to support Mr. The Hipster today as well. Right, so we've already deployed, but I, we, I just kind of did what I did with 40k and I was on autopilot. Yes. So the first thing we did was we picked a mission out of the main rule book. And this we was did. the first moment that I actually got excited chat for Age of Sigma immediately. Now, granted, this is the old rule book. This is going to change in the future. But I'm hoping, because it will have been written by the same ish design team that wrote this one, it won't be too different. So the core rule book actually has three. Three missions? You call them something else. You call them bat- I call battle plans. Battle plans in Age of Sigma. We need to learn the lingo, you see. Should we do that? And then you go to that. Can you can you pop that, pull that up? It'll be upside down. Will it be? Yeah. Now it'll be the right way up. Ta-da! It'll probably be too bright. <laughs> oh no, the white balance. 
There you go. It's because we normally have it in a dark dice box, you see. Yeah, so frontal assault. So there's three, there's three main battle plans in the rulebook, right? Front, frontal assault and two others. And basically, depending on which one you're in, it adds another objective marker, right? Yes. So in frontal assault, we have on top down, Myth of the Cloud, pretty please, if you could, please, thank you, please. We have three objective markers that are 15 inches apart across the centre of the battle grid. Now, yeah. we do have two 2,000 port armies on the table. The deployment zones, very simple, straight across the middle. That's your deployment zone. That's it. Yeah. Dr. Gooden. The only rule for deploying is you had to be nine inches or more away from enemy territory. So yeah. because we split the board directly in half, that half is Mr. the Hipster's Flesh Eater Court territory. This half is my Sylvaneth territory. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't be within nine inches of my territory, so he's on nine inches here. And I couldn't be within nine inches of his territory, so I'm nine inches away. So there's an 18-inch gap between us. Yes. And that becomes important for things like where you have sort of like... You have this with the Sylvaneth. You have territory-based territory abilities. Mm -hmm. So if you open your book up, what you'll have is you'll have something where you pick three terrain features within your territory to be overgrown terrain features. And this is part of your army rule. Oh, is it? <laughs> no, no, Not it, it, won't, it won't really matter, right? Well, I mean, it, it is quite a fundamental part of how they work. But uh, where was it? should be in here somewhere. I have a Seasons of Walnut, isn't it? Yeah, so you can pick one of these to be uh, an additional rule for all of it. Which we can Some do. of this extra stuff we're gonna we're gonna chin off. We're gonna look at core mechanics, but this is gonna be interesting to know for your um, battle tome yep. or codex. There, places of power. After territories are determined, before faction terrain features are set up, you can pick up to three terrain features on the battlefield that are wholly outside enemy territory. Those terrain features are considered to be your overgrown terrain features. At the start of your hero phase, you can heal one wound allocated to each friendly Sylvaneth unit that is wholly within nine inches of an overgrown terrain feature or friendly awakened wildwood. That would be why the terrain pieces are quite important, all That's the trees yeah, that yeah, I'm building yeah. at home. So some of, a lot of this stuff, for, the, for tonight at least, a lot of this stuff, chat, we're not going to use because it's just extra army rules to remember. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to try, 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 to try and just get down the core mechanics of Age of Sigmar because yeah. there are some fundamental differences to 40k, mm -hmm. right? But um, there's a lot of stuff that I've noticed when I skimmed through this a, a little while ago that makes the army quite customizable to how you want to play. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen for quite a few of them, there's lots of different ways you can play each faction and different things you can lean into. So you can go into more kind of Dryad or Tree Lord base or Monster Heavy, all that kind of stuff, Yeah, which is exciting. Yeah, it's something that I thought was going to happen in 40k and so far hasn't. Um, because, as you say, there are certain things. like So the way we've built your army, you are a Heartwood army. And a Heartwood army means oh. you can have your Kurnoth Hunters as your battle line. Yeah. Which then meant we could fill your three battle line slots with that, that, and that. Okay. Um, so they, and then they have rules for Heartwood, which lets you, um, so your Heartwood uh, chapter tactic, for lack of a better word, um, is you pick three of my units and you get plus one to wound against them. That's cool. I'm um, into it. That type of thing. And then it just keys into using the Kurnoth Hunters en masse yeah, within yeah. your army. So for me, I have Hollow Morn, which is my grand court, whatever it's called, which let me take these guys as, as battle line. Which what meant that I didn't have to paint 60 ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> important. Very yeah. important. Yeah. So we picked, what we did is we picked the first mission, which was called the thingy thingy, but yeah. You know, it's called Frontal Assault. Frontal Assault. Put the, we'll put the objectives down. What I, do you know one thing I've... So here's a big difference straight away. Here's an immediate big difference for Age of Sigmar, which I absolutely love. So points. it told us suggested um, terrain map sizes for armies. We're, we're 2,000 yeah. points, so 45 by 60 was a suggested, uh, suggested size. And then it, said, it simply said, for a, battle, for a battle of this size, I think it was four to eight, or was it eight? Or it's eight terrain pieces. Eight terrain pieces. Yeah. Just, just put eight terrain pieces down. Doesn't, doesn't matter where. None of this L-shaped nonsense or building symmetrical ruins, put eight terrain pieces down. Yeah. I'm instantly in love with that. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, I mean, we, we don't build tournament tables on the channel anyway for 40K. Joe, I just let him loose in the terrain room and he lets his creative juices flow and he makes cool tables. Makes yeah. a mess everywhere. He makes a mess everywhere. I have to constantly hoover. <laughs> Vacuum for you Americans. <laughs> but uh, he does make amazing tables. But one of the things Joe does have to do, and we talked about this off camera before we went live, one of the things Joe has to do is he has to kind of saturate the table a little bit with terrain for a couple of reasons. But the main reason being, line of sight blocking is fundamentally key to 40K, mm -hmm. having some semblance of balance. 
Uh, the reason being for that is it's 40k, it's sci-fi. Everyone's got big guns and tanks and cannons and all kinds of stuff. Some of them, the line of sight blocking terrain doesn't even matter if you're rocking things like D cannons. Mm -hmm. So giving uh, other armies things like cover bonuses is also fundamentally important to 40k if you're going to balance. If you had Planet Bowling Ball when I ran World Eaters against um, heavy shooting Eldar, I just flat lose, yep. there isn't a game. So for Age of Sigma, it's eight terrain pieces, off you go. And that was it. Um, we have two units that can shoot? Three, you, two? You have, so you have Alario, if you pass me your book. Yeah. Alario can shoot by throwing that spear. Yeah. And I think Durthu can also do something. Uh, also, by the way, for the Sylvaneth, big shout out to Chris Galloway. I don't know if he's in chat. I think he's on nights tonight, so I don't think he can be in chat. But this Sylvaneth army is his, which he shipped over via Royal Mail to the channel from Northern Ireland so that we could use it. What a legend. And they are absolutely fantastic. They're very pretty. Well. He's done yeah. a very nice yeah. job. What a legend. So Lariel the Ever Queen has the Spear of Kernoth, yeah. where she just lobs that great big spear and then it just comes back. Of course. Uh, and then you have Spirit of Dirthy, which has the Verdant Blast. Okay. Where he just... So you've got some face. guns and stuff. Yeah, but that's it. Okay. That's, the, uh, that's the only... Because uh, that's not a Tree Lord Ancient, that's a normal Tree Lord. Ah, you have Strangle Roots here. So my big monsters can throw things. Strangle. Your big monsters can do to throw things. I have zero ranged weapons in my entire life. you know how much that makes me happy? As a World Eaters <laughs> fan, yeah. you know how much that makes me happy? That makes me very happy. No guns! My Stormcast is a different story, but Joe will find That's out That's a Joe problem. Yeah, that's very much a Joe problem for tomorrow. So, um, so very basically, if you, so we, we're just going to use the core rule book. We don't have the, um, not called chapter approved, it's called something else. General's Handbook. The General's Handbook was essentially chapter approved. We're not using those tonight. We're just getting core, very core mechanics down, mm -hmm. which means there might be some updates to things that we're not using because we didn't really want to mess around trying to delve into all of the updates, FAQs, etc. We're just using core battle tomes, core rulebook to learn the basic mechanics, yeah. right? Cool. Yeah, and we're not, we're not using things like, if anybody asks, if we're using things like the Antor, I think it's called the Antorian locuses and things like that. That's General's Handbook stuff. It's just we're not not doing it. That's it's like just... additional mission type balls, etc. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's like it's like what they did in the tail end of ninth edition with the um, what were they called? Chapter approved, mm. where they went. Here's the season. Here's the new secondaries. Everything gets. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, we have a focus on these guys. They can do that. So scoring in this game is also simpler, but we'll go through that as and when if it becomes relevant. Yes. Right. So we have to point two thousand points. Uh, I did put stuff down first. Josh put stuff down second, so strictly I get first turn. Yes. And we just start moving stuff. Well, you have your hero face first. I have a hero face first, yes. is that right? Yes. So there's no roll off required, Mr. The Kyle. We can just go straight into turn one. We can. Go on, turn one. Uh, you'll also notice we have fudged the scoreboard to make it fit for tonight. I've had to do some manual updates. Manual updates means I do have fancy graphics here but they're manually inputted. Yes. When we go to the top-down scoreboard, some of the numbers are misaligned. In fact, the, num the main score here is slightly misaligned. What normally happens is, when we run our scoreboard program, which is a custom-built program, and we pick our armies, the army pictures that go in then drop all the numbers in the right places. Yep. So because we have had to put manual photos in, it hasn't dropped the numbers in the right places. I feel like for two nights we can live with it. Yeah, we can. And then for Age of Sigma launch, whenever that happens, we will then look at making a more permanent change to the scoreboard for Age of Sigmar specifically. Yeah. So we've, I've done what I can, but we're, we basically don't have any names that come up with all the... It's just going to be Team Blue, Team Red. Yeah, I'm Red team blue. versus Blue. Red versus Blue, I'm Team Blue, you're Team Blue, you're Team Red. There we go. So we go into the command phase and we each get... Hero phase. Hero... F <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this a lot, by it's the way. It's a long night. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I will be only pedantic when it's funny. No, no, I, I need you to be because it's a whole different language. So hero phase... Some things are similar. We still both get a command point in the hero phase. We do. However, you get an extra I'm one. I'm going second, so I get an extra one. And both our generals are on the battlefield, so we also get an extra one. So I'll read it out for everybody who's playing along at home, of course. Uh, <laughs> after determining who will take the f uh, which turn, the player who will take the first turn receives one command point, and the player who will take the second turn receives two command points. So I have two of the finest command points, because I'm going second. In addition, uh, commander points, command, commander points, command points allow you to use command abilities. You receive command points at the start of the battle round after priority is determined. In addition, if your general is on the battlefield at the start of the hero phase, you receive one command point. Okay. At the end of the battle round, any command points that have not been used are lost. Right, okay. 
So I will have three and you will have two. So you've got three, I've got two. Yes. TP. Do you hear that, Mr. Kyle? No. <laughs> I need two CP, please. He needs three CP. And if we do a turn update, not a battle round update, we need to minus the additional one that the system will give us automatically because it's programmed for 40k. Yeah, you will just need to just obviously get, grab my I attention. I will continue to yeah. remind you, don't you worry. Only, only because I'm... There's a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> I, I don't envy your job tonight. No, no, no. Is it like there's a lot coming in? Like, is so we so we will need a minute in a minute to just throw it all at you. Yeah, we will each gain a command point every hero phase. Oh, so that's still so that automatic thing's fine. Oh, that sweet. should be fine every turn. Okay, every, good. Every okay, turn. good. Because yeah. our, our software automatically adds one every turn because that's what 40k does. We should so. be fine, but okay. if we're not. People at chat in chat can Shout can us. correct us. <laughs> yeah. uh, they're probably already correcting me anyway. So Age of Sigma is um, like 40k in that it has phases, okay, but they are different slightly to um, mm -hmm. to what we're used to, okay. So the game is broken down into a number of phases. Which, six of them. Six of them. That's what I was about to look for right now. Page 253, dear. Shut up. <laughs> Hero phase. Yes. So command, for us 40k people, command phase, right? Movement phase, speaks for itself, movement phase. Shooting phase, speaks for itself, shooting phase. Charge phase, combat phase, battle shock phase, which is morale, right? That's correct. So, in essence, it's the same now as 10th. As 9th. Because you no longer have a battle shock phase in 10th. That's all rolled into oh, the yeah, command phase, yeah. isn't it? It's, basically, this is... But 9th still had a psychic phase. Yes. Well, so spells happen in our hero phase. Oh, so, I like it. You will be able to cast some magic in a moment. Okay, cool. Because you have many wizards. So you hero before you move, you move before you shoot, you shoot before you charge, you charge before you fight, and then you fight before you test to see if you're brave enough. That's correct. Easy, isn't Easy, it? Easy, isn't it? Easy. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start looking at some hero phase stuff, because basically in your hero phase, all of your um, all of your characters have battle tome things, right? That look like these here, right? Big pages full of rules. Now that one is pretty exceptional, because that's um, Ariola, the Ever Queen. Is that essentially <laughs> just a codex? It's a uh, yes. battle times of codex, yeah. So some of them are significantly smaller, like the War Scroll Revenants here, Ooh. right? That's a fancy one. This, I'm very this, jealous of that one. This one's smaller than yours by, by far. <laughs> but, <laughs> but look how pretty it is. That's, well, that's, I mean, uh, this is this is one of my favourite things, right? When we're thinking about narrative-based stuff, there's the front of the Flesh Eater Courts uh, book, but that's how they perceive themselves. Oh. I like that book. I like yeah. that book. It's yeah. lovely, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, on each of these data sheets, which is not called data sheets, in Age of Sigma, they're called war scrolls, right? In each of these war scrolls, you have a number of things. In the top corner, you'll see a little wheel here, right? That gives you four pieces of data. It gives you your move characteristic in inches, how far you can move in your movement phase. Your wounds characteristic, so how much damage you can take before you go to wound zero and die. Your bravery characteristic, which is for your battle shock phase, and your save characteristics, what you would normally roll if the thing that's shooting or hitting you has no rend. Rend is like AP. In fact, exactly the same as AP, yeah, essentially, yeah. for 40k, right? Across the top, you then have your weapons. You'll have missile weapons, ranged attacks, and melee weapons. Melee weapons, right? <laughs> They're different. Uh, each one of those will give you a range to see how far you can swing, hit, bash, etc. And they give you a number of things. How many attacks you have, what you have to roll to hit, what you have to roll to wound, your rend and your damage. The difference here, the fundamental difference here, with 40k specifically, is the um, roll to wound. Okay, yes. so 40k still uses a system where you compare the attacking strength of the melee or ranged weapon versus the toughness of the model you're attacking. Doesn't exist in Age of Sigmar, you just have a flat rune, a wound roll, okay? Yeah. So for example, if I look at the Guardian Sword here on the Spirit of Dirthy, okay, um, it hits it, what? No, it's just, I, love the, I love this model. I'll tell, okay. I'll tell you how we can make it more busted as well in a minute. So his Guardian Sword <laughs> is a melee weapon with a three-inch range, so you can actually reach things three inches away from him, right? It has three attacks. It says it hits on a three plus. It wounds on a three plus. It has a rend of minus two and a damage of star, and that refers to a table. So if they have a damage of star, you see this little black blob on the, on the page here, it refers normally to a table below. Uh, interestingly means no matter what I'm hitting, it doesn't matter whether I'm hitting a cruel boy, whether I'm hitting a ghoul, or whether I'm hitting uh, Nagash, I wound on a 3+. plus. Yes. Unless they have a rule that says otherwise. Okay. Yes. Underneath that then, you have the table, which depends on how many wounds suffered. This is like your degrading profile in 40k, but sometimes it can make actually things better. Um, so for example, the Guardian Sword, when I've suffered no wounds, well up to six wounds, is damage six. Yes. <laughs> this is a bit horrible. <laughs> Remember as well, for those folks at home who don't know, damage spills over in this game. Well, that's, yes. Yeah. I forgot about that. So, Dirthu, 
This is why this is why it's important. Durthu can wade into twenty ghouls. In forty k, he'd be able to kill how many attacks? He has three attacks. He'd be able to kill three of them. Yeah. In this, he can kill eighteen. I like this already. Yeah. Wow. Ang will be tasty in, in the Sigma. Yeah. He would. Underneath then the table, you then have a list of rules, right? Some of them will give you um, wizard abilities, so magic stuff that you do in your hero phase. Some yeah. of them give you hero abilities, uh, and there's lots of other bits. Some of them are just passive second, like special abilities that happen all the time. Yeah. Some of them give you auras. Some of them give you special rules like fly, that kind of thing, right? There's a lot to take in, but everything you need for the war scroll is on the war scroll. Yes. Which is which is really nice. This is really exciting. I'm, I'm so excited. This is Kyle. exciting. I'm really happy about this. At the very, very bottom, we have the keyword system, right? One uh, one set of keywords, order, Sylvaneth, hero, wizard, and whatever it else it is. So this one is order, Sylvaneth, three spirits, monster, hero, spirit of death. Yeah. Some of those keywords give you extra stuff in the rulebook. So monster gives you access to the monster abilities where you can rampage and stuff like that. The monster's right. rampages, yeah. Yeah, which is which I, I've heard is very good, but I have no idea. <laughs> they can be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the basic, that's a basic war scroll. I say basic, a spirit of dirty, but that is a war scroll. If we go into something like, um, a little bit more simple, like the, what they're called? A dryad. These little guys, the Kernoth Hunters, you'll see that it takes up half a page. It's significantly smaller. You still have the wheel, but it doesn't degrade. So it has no table. You just have a ranged attack and a melee attack, depending on what weapons it's given. And you'll notice with Kernoth Hunters that up here you say, with Kernoth Great Bows, with Kernoth Great Swords, with Kernoth Size. So this is something that's new to us in 40k, mm -hmm. where they're breaking out the weapon options into separate data sheets or war scrolls. But this is not new to Sigma. This is something that's been that's existed for a while. Yeah. Some of the war scrolls that I've seen do give you options, but mm. the option is for basically every model in the unit normally. Yeah, so I was, when I was looking yeah. through the Seraphon one the other day, literally, if you're putting on the war clubs and stuff, they all have to have that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've covered off a war scroll in essence. Yeah, basically covered it mostly. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Some of the some of the keyword stuff, free spirits, etc., is important. One of the, my favourite things about Age of Sigmar that I've noticed so far is, depending on what heroes you take, mm -hmm. it can impact things becoming battle line. Same yeah. as depending on what kind of detachment you take can affect what can be battle line. Yeah. So certain things you look at it and you go, I don't want to use those units as battle line. Have a look around the keywords because somewhere it might say if you take a blah blah character as your uh, as your hero or whatever, mm -hmm. you then can take this thing as your battle line unit. It becomes battle line. Yeah. And that's really important. So the, the example here for me is uh, Morpeg Knights, which are the Batwings uh, cavalry, the new cavalry from the Flesh Eater Courts army set. <coughs> they become battle line if General is an abhorrent gore warden. Which is oh, it's new, a General. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Which is the new um, yeah. flying guy with all the keys. So um, unlike 40k, General, which is Age of Sigma terms for Warlord, and I'm sorry if you know Age of Sigma, by the way, I'm really, really sorry, but I'm very, very conscious, specifically for our audience, that we are predominantly 40k. So I'm just trying to convert for people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So General's Warlord, the difference in Age of Sigma is when you pick a General, it can impact a few different things. One of those things is it can change what's battle line. It's something that I really want them to bring into 40k, because yeah. I miss it. I miss if you have a captain in, with a jump pack as your Warlord, then Assault Infantry become... Uh, core. That's the sort of thing I quite miss. Yeah, I think I think it would be good if I think it would be good if it came in, and also if battle line actually meant something other than you can take. Six. <laughs> we won't. Yeah, we won't double down that rabbit hole. That, that, I mean, like it, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't mean much in here. It's it's a it's a fulfill your army requirement. Yeah. So in terms of the construction of your army. So as fleshy to courts, for example, if I do gristle gore, I can take zombie dragons as battle line. Which means I can field an all dragons army. Mm -hmm. It's an all zombie dragons army. But you can do that as, as well with um, with uh, gold space marines. Stormcast, yes. Thank so you. If you if you, <laughs> it's changed a little bit recently because I own boys. a, a Cryptborn has appeared with the Cryptborn Stormwing. But you, if you take him as your general, or if you take the Knight Draconis as your general, you can then take Storm Drake Guard as battle line, yeah. which then means you can field an entire army of dragons. What we don't have in Age of, Age of Sigma is a limit of as a rule of three. That doesn't exist. Oh, really? It does not exist. What you have is unique characters, like Hilario. You can't take endless Hilarios. If you tried, she's 800 points. So, <laughs> good. good. Have fun. Two. Two thousand points. <laughs> she's very good. She's not 1,600 points or two of them good. Although that does, as you'll find out later, actually, there's actually, you get two of her anyway. Because she can summon. And if she dies, she might come back. Yeah, <laughs> she, she's very, 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 very good. Um, well, some pe people on the internet will disagree with me. 
Um, 800 points, she's probably too expensive, but anyway, it doesn't matter, it's the yeah. minutia. Um, when you have your building your army requirements, it's not, and I hope this doesn't change in AOS 4, but you do still, at 2,000 points, have to have three battle line. Yeah. And you have to have one character. There are limits on how many characters you can take, and there are limits on how many artillery you can take, and there are limits on how many behemoths you can take, which is why the switching of the keywords for battle line, things like Gristle Gore, taking monster, taking zombie dragons as battle line, means that they move from the behemoth keyword to the battle line keyword, which is why you can take more of them. Okay, cool. So there's, there's, it, it sounds really complicated, it's not really that complicated. It didn't seem that complicated for me. Now, I am, I'm going to say this now, right, AOS 4, I am remaining. I'm conscious of what happened around uh, 40k 10th edition, right? I was very positive all around the, the launch and the pre-launch of 10th edition, and it turned out to not necessarily be their best piece of work, despite the fact that we're having a ton of fun with it. Age yeah. of Sigma, I am... Slightly apprehensive because mm -hmm. some of the language they're using to describe the new edition of Age of Sigma is quite reminiscent of the language they use to describe 10th edition 40k. Yes. However, I'm remaining positive because they are still two separate design studios. Yeah. So my fingers are crossed that when we talk about this stuff and we're getting a little bit lost, a little bit complicated, and they've gone, we've made it simpler, it's kind of the same, but it's easy to understand is what I'm hoping they've done rather than we've monumentally changed everything. Yeah. Because I don't know how you take a war scroll that we've got now and you actually make that that much simpler. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah, pretty simple it's already. It's not like, I mean look, look, there are, there are, one of the things of, of course with 10th edition was the simplifying of that generic game speak. So things like feel no pain, yeah. deep strike, all that kind of stuff, exploding sixes. Even though they call it sustained hits, they should have just called it exploding sixes. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, because you know, yeah. that's what people call it. Yeah. Um, anyway. There's not, there are some legacy terms like deep strike. So like I've got people in reserve. Um, they're circling above the battlefield, but we don't have the term deep strike, as it were. We don't have the term feel no pain. What we have is we have a ward save, which I think some of your guys do. Okay. Um, so, which yeah. is on the which is on the war scroll though, right? Yeah, yeah, it will be. It will be on. Yeah. There. Okay. So one thing I hope that we don't see is a universal special rules for AOS because I don't think it needs it. Having it all on the war scroll, this is what it was in 8th and 9th for data sheets, so everyone forgets. Because, you know, things that would have fought from golden light they come would have from golden light they come in the mm. custodies book. I much prefer everything being there on the card. I, do you know what? I don't mind them employing a keyword system for deep strike. Yep. As long as it's still on the war scroll. As long as it's... Yeah. And all that means is the language is the same. Yeah. So when I come up to you and I say, I have a deep strike, you go, oh, I know what he's got. Because mm. I've seen it in the rule book, but it's still on my card, so I can still use the card. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is the thing is like I I love so much the narrative of of some of the the way stuff like AOS does deploy stuff like deep yeah, strike. Yeah. It's not a deep strike. It's golden storm warriors stepping out of a thunderbolt. Cool, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Lightning strikes and right. in place is just a dude like this, like sup. I'm so, about to cave your skull. So the in. first thing we have is a is a is a hero phase. Yes. At the start of the hero phase, starting with a player whose turn is taking place, each player can pick one hero to perform a heroic action. Yes. C7.1, do that in a minute. Each player receives one command, but we've done that at the generals on the battlefield. In addition, in your hero phase, you can use friendly wizards to attempt to cast spells, friendly priests to chant prayers and attempt to banish invocations, and both to attempt to dispel ender spells. In the enemy hero phase, you can use friendly wizards to attempt to unbind spells. So my hero phase, right, mm -hmm. we, we've already both got the command point anyway, I can cast spells, I can cast um, endless spells, we don't have any endless spells, I can chant prayers. What uh, Josh can do is he can attempt to dispel endless spells. Right, correct? Yes. Good, okay. Yeah. Um, there we go. A, a unit with the hero keyword on its war scroll is a hero. Funny that. At the start of the hero phase, you can carry out one heroic action from the table below with one friendly hero. The effect of the heroic action is treated in the same way as the effect of an ability for rules purposes. We have heroic leadership, heroic willpower, the finest hour, and heroic recovery. Best day ever. Best day ever. So friendly, heroic leadership, pick a friendly hero, add two to the roll for uh, if your general's been slain. On a four plus, you receive a command point. Yeah. So I could just go, uh, every turn, roll a dice, four plus, get command point. That is pretty much what everyone does. And if I have a, <laughs> if, if, my, if my general's dead, I get plus two to that, 
because if your general has been slain, yeah, it seems weird. Add two if it's been slain. Add two to the wrong. Does that make it harder to get or better to get? Uh, it's better to get it if it's plus two to the roll. So on a yeah. two plus if your hero's dead, you get a command point. So that could be seen as a strat as well then? You get more command points y yeah. if your hero's dead. Yeah, but you don't really want to just like throw your general away. Heroic willpower, pick a, pick a friendly hero that is not a wizard uh, and he can do a wizard spell. Yeah. He can dispel a wizard spell. Yeah. Right? Their finest hour, make him good. Yeah, it can add only do one, that once as add well. Add one to the wound rolls for attacks made by that hero until the end of the turn. Add one to the save rolls for attacks that target that hero until the end of the turn. You cannot carry this heroic action with the same hero more than once in the same battle. And the, fine, the final one is heroic recovery, where you can regenerate uh, wounds, basically. Yes. So, I'll pick any, any hero, it doesn't matter, Alariel, right? Yeah. And guess what? I'm going to go for heroic leadership because nothing else makes sense right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because plus one a wound that I can use once per battle is kind of points if I don't make combat in the first turn. Exactly. Four plus. I gain a command point. I'm going to do the same thing. I don't. Because you can do that in your enemy command phase. I can, yeah. Hero phase. Yeah. So every, every hero, so each of us can do, starting with you, because you get to choose first, then I get to choose. Then you will do all of your, uh, if you have any hero phase command abilities. So I, it then says do hero phase command abilities. One of them that you get generically in the rule book is rally. If you're running away, run away. Um, I don't need to rally. We've just started. So I'm going to guess that Ariola has hero abilities. How do you know if it's a hero ability? So she'll, it will specifically say in your hero phase you can do... In your one. hero phase you can heal up to 2d6 wounds allocated to this unit. Mm -hmm. 2d6 to yeah. her. Yep. yep. <laughs> She's not wounded, that's kind of pointless. In yep. addition, once per battle at the end of your hero phase, if it's been destroyed, you can roll a dice and see if she comes back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> LOL. <sighs> once uh, per and then she heals 2d6 so she's back to the back to the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's good. 800 oh. points, good. She's all right, isn't she? Yeah. She has a metamorphosis spell, okay, because mm -hmm. she's a wizard. I'm a wizard, Harold. This unit can attempt to cast three spells in your hero phase and attempt to unbind three spells in the enemy hero phase. If this unit is part of the Silver Death Army, it knows all spells from the lore of the Deepwood in addition to the other spells it knows. And you get some in the core rule book. Magic Missile. Yep, and Ar Arcane, Arcane Bolt. Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield. Yeah, Arcane Bolt Mystic Shield. So a shooting attack that does mortal wounds, a smite, and a Mystic Shield is like, a, is like an invulnerable save, right? Plus one to your saves. Yeah, okay, there you go. See, he I knows believe. more than me. I have Metamorphosis, um, where you can pick units within range of the blah, and I have another, a whole bunch of other spells. Yeah. I'm going to look at those spells now, whilst Mr. The Kyle talks to chat because he's looking stressed over there that lots of things are coming in. I'm not stressed, I'm loving this. this loving life. So I'm going to jump into the Warheads to chat first. Uh, Cameron, thank you for the super chat, said... Hope to see a horrid full dragon stormcast list tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we, it was going to happen, but then I had to get on a train. Ah, so that's lots of boxes. Instead, I bought lots of judicators to shoot Joe's vampires. Good. We Tim Chaser, thank you for the five war hips the memberships. Yay! Thanks, Tim, for going over there and doing that. Carla Hodgie, thank you for the five war hips the memberships. Yay! Yay! Uh, Thanes is totally not a cult. Thank you for the super chat. Said, love to see the top down on this channel. Mr. The Demperor should consider using a top down view on his channel. How, how tolerant of language are you on your channel, <laughs> Mr. The Hipster? I usually have a quite high tolerance, uh, very low tolerance for it. Oh. We will save that for after the camera. <laughs> There's a prime. Thank you for the five War Hipster memberships. Hey, Rich. Thanes is totally not a cult. Thank you for the five War Hipster memberships. Yay! Uh, Don't you guys are going to get me all well, misty eyed. Well, they, they have said, is it, a, is it a competition to see who can get to 100 first? And I was like, we love competition on this channel. We do love competition. We do. Is Moving into the Liam Dempsey chat. <laughs> Carla Hodgey, thank you for the five good memberships. Schooner, thank you for the super chat. Said, trying to pay up my 100 ghouls, contrast for the win. But after finishing Usheron, it was an absolute dream. Waiting on the judge now. Oh, that video is already here. You can see it. Grand Justice Gourmet. Ooh. Jill, thank you for the super chat. Said this feels exactly like my intro game for AOS back in 2018 with Mr. Chiron talking me through what I needed to know and cool stuff to know for the future. Hashtag Garage Hammer. So what we're going to do as well, when, when the new, thank you, Jill, by the way, when the new edition does drop, um, I fully intend to do a series of learn to play Age of Sigma videos on the channel. Uh, pre-recorded stuff rather than streamed because we can polish it so it's more digestible when people haven't got to sway through us chatting nonsense and swearing at each other to be able to understand the rules of Age Sigma. By the way, you'd be more than welcome to come to the to the studio and we can make that content together as well. Yeah, if you're I'm, up, I'm for up for that. Um, 
because I I think I feel like when there's a new edition of 40k, it's kind of a tweak on the last edition, and it's relatively easy for me to pick up. The new edition of Age of Sigma for me specifically is going to be learning the whole thing, so we might as well document that process and put it out to you guys if you're interested. I'm very positive about New Age of Sigma. I'm looking forward to it. You stretched then. Was that just a stretch or were you excited? I'm excited because I just want to interrupt him with a, going back into the War Hipster chat. James Mathias, thank you for a 50 War Hipster memberships. <gasps> That's another, we'll slap that into his cumulative. Thank you very much. Anyone, by the way. I need a button. I we, need a button that's just like... We say this, we tend to say this on the, on the Lim Dentist channel all the time, but if anyone receives a membership from either of the chats, please, 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 please say thank you to those that have given it to you. And pass it on if you can, if you're able to. If not, just please make sure you say thank you. Because on the Believe Dance channel, we like to pass things on. We do like, we try and get people to pass. Yeah, if you get gifted one, pass it forward. Yeah. yeah. And then next month, think about becoming a member all by yourself if you enjoy the channel, you like the content, and you enjoy hanging out with people. Yeah. Uh, because if you mm. do that, if you do that, uh, it helps the channel, it supports us here in the studio, it pays for all of the stuff we have, the lights, the studio, the cameras, the action. You know what I did there? It's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's James good. Mathias, thank you very much. That's very generous of you. 50 gifts yeah. is incredible. Thank, thank you, very you much. James. Thank you. Uh, thank going you. back into the Liam Dempsey chat, uh, Kazarian, thank you for the super chat, said, As someone with 60 dead walker zombies in front of me in various states of painted, I feel that avoiding painting 100 ghouls in myself. <laughs> I don't really have anything I can do. So I've looked at the you've Deadwood got, spells. You've got many spells you can do. The Deadwood spells are all about healing. Oh, are they? Yeah. So I can't do Deadwood spells because they're all about bringing models back, basically, right? So, artifacts of power. Law of the Deepwood, right? Yeah. Uh, each phase, you can start your next hero phase, you can heal one wound allocated to the caster. Mm -hmm. Regrowth is a spell, right? Pick up a, uh, if that's three cards, pick one friendly unit with, wholly within yeah. range visible, you can heal d6 wounds. The Dwellers is a, is a, is a missile spell, 12 inch range, can't do that one. Mm -hmm. Harvest, pick an enemy unit within range of the caster, suffers d3 mortal wounds, range of three inches. Harmony, right, you can bring a unit, if you pick Dryas, Tree of the Spirit, so you can heal D3 slain models that unit instead of one, yeah. right? And then Tree Song, so pick one friendly Awakened Wildwood unit within range of the cast, I don't have one. Yeah, okay. that's fine. So why don't you do... Um, shield. Mystic Shield. Mystic Shield, which has a casting value of, I think, five? Five. Whoop! And I cast. Yes, who was I it? I had to take a psychic test chat! It makes me so happy! Who was it on? An Ariel. Okay, cool. So why not? She's got plus one to save rolls. She has to plus one to our saving rolls. And then I also have, what do I have? I have Dirthu? No? Yeah, you have Dirthu. I don't think he's a wizard. He has, he's not a wizard, Harry. And then a standard tree lord who's also not a wizard, Harry. Start your movement phase, melee attack, you can carry this monster's rampage. Uh, you can carry this monster's rampage, start your movement phase. Oh, well, okay, cool. So we're good. That's my, that's my hero phase done. Yes. I think. There's nothing I can do. There's I nothing think. I can do. I'm Which pretty certain. We can go into uh, my movement face, Mr. Hipster. Each time, okay, yeah, I earn noble deeds points uh, when I do stuff, and I'm not doing any stuff, so that's cool. I'm, a, I'm in a good mood, Kyle. I don't know if you can tell. I'm, out, I'm, I'm loving this. This is great. So my tree lord, this cheeky chap over here, he yep. can move a monumental, <laughs> impressive, a stompy five inches. Yes. That's my nice. favourite so, number. One of the cool things about the Silver Neth, right, is if you just flip back to when we were talking about the overgrown terrain features. Oh God, why would you do this to me? Well, just you know, give people, give you, get you some excitement, right? A little bit further, a little bit from this, this way, further, further. There we go. <laughs> so walk the hidden paths or strike and fade. Once per oh, once per turn, at the end of your movement phase, you can pick one friendly Silver Neth unit that's wholly within nine inches of an overgrown terrain feature or friendly awakened wildwood. If you do so, remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up again more than nine inches away from the enemy units, wholly within nine inches of, of a different overgrown terrain feature that is more than three inches away from enemy units, or a different friendly awakened wildwood that's more than three inches away from enemy units. So basically, I could pick up a deep strike. Yeah. In range of a, of a thingy, magic. Yeah. So one of the one of the tactics with the silver neth is obviously, as you mentioned, the trees. Mm -hmm. You bring the trees with you. Okay. You then use spells, which I think the tree lord ancient can do, or there's a there's an artifact in there which lets you just summon another tree. So you can start with a tree, put it here, for example, and you can just summon another tree. You could put it, for example, there. Then you could teleport. Durthu from this overgrown terrain feature to that tree and then charge straight in. Are you keeping track? I, do, I mean, what I heard is he just solved global warming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It seem like I was going to say. <laughs> exactly. That's what the Silver Neth can do. Um, but as you say, you have a five inch move. 
with him if you don't want to do any of that teleporting stuff. Well, we don't have any Awakened Wildwoods. No. Uh, now, same thing as in uh, 40k, you can advance. And this is called run. Uh, is it just a d6? It's just a d6. Can you charge after you run? Not unless it specifically says so on your war scroll. What, well, not unless it says you can, or unless... I might as well run. Right. Just the three inches, actually. Just the three. Uh, there you go. Thanes is totally not a cult. Honest, thank you for Super Chat. It says, does Liam actually have an army? On an unrelated note, lots of forest terrain on the table this evening. It looks lovely. I made the table. Didn't Joe didn't even come today. No. He was supposed to come today, just to see Mr. the Hipster. And then Joe's lady wife was like, no. <laughs> and that was the end of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bane Rowland, thank you for Super Chat. It says, for Skaven. Thank you very much. It's for Skaven. For Skaven. Skaven, Pop I think, is going to very much be a Mr. the Kyle army. You're quite excited about Skaven, aren't you? I am super excited. I'm so excited. I'm so super excited. I am super excited. I love them. They're so good. Uh, Top-down camera complaints committee. Thank you for the super chat. Why can't I swear <laughs> as much on your channel? I want to swear at people. When did Joe wear glasses? Where is Mr. The, Mr. the Warhips there? Good point. Good point. Um, Mr. the Warhipster is like an upgraded Joe. Yeah. Okay. He's slightly more kempt. He's slightly better pronounced. He can read, which is a big difference, <laughs> and his painting's better. Well, and he speaks the Queen's English. Yeah. Well. Well. Um, well. So one thing I'll point out for the folks at home playing along, uh, we have command abilities that we can do. Oh, do various, we? At various different intervals. Is this something I should have been doing? <laughs> no, no. So, well, you, you can if you want. So you can spend a command point to do a command ability. Some of your war scrolls will have a command ability themselves that they can do. But you do have per phase ones that I can do in your turn mm -hmm. and ones that you can do in your turn. Oh, that's exciting. So in the movement phase, there's two. One for me and one for you. At the double, you can use this command ability after you declare that a friendly unit will run. The unit must receive the command. The run roll is not made for uh, the run roll is not made for that unit. Instead, six inches is added to that unit's move characteristic in that phase. The unit is still considered to have run. So it's an auto, auto advance six. Auto advance six. I like that. That's cool. I, if I wish to, can do a. Uh, you can use this command ability in the enemy movement phase after an enemy unit finishes a normal move, run, or retreat. The unit that receives the unit command receives the command must be within nine inches of that enemy unit and more than three inches from all enemy units. You can make a d6-inch move with the unit that receives the command, but it must finish the move more than three inches from all enemy units and cannot shoot later in the turn. So you can basically react move? I can do a one react move. That's cool. Yes. And an auto advance six for every single army, because it's a core rulebook stratagem, essentially, yes. is really cool. I'm a fan of it. Yeah. When Ariola, the Ever Queen, is on full health, she can move 16 inches. <laughs> is this real? 16 inches? Yep. That's a fast little skittle bug, isn't it? It is. We're uh, 18 inches apart, Mr. The Hipster. Are you just going to go for it? <laughs> I mean, I might as well. Hero. All right. Yeah, I, mean. I want to do some fighting, don't I? Bane Roland, think of the five gifted memberships. Oh. Oh. Is that the bit you glued back on? Yeah. No one tell Chris. <laughs> he went Dave watch. Meakin, think of a super chat, says, loving this. Please keep explaining the rules for us newbies. So we're going to go for a full 16 inch, but I'm worried about that big Chumbawamba over there. Is he terrifying? <laughs> He's very good. This At wasn't me, by the way, Chris. This was bro I told you about this. It broke off in the post. We, we gently glued it back on today. She isn't going to be as sharp when she throws her spear now. <laughs> it might be a little dull. It's lost its rend. <laughs> um, but I thank think. you so much, Bane, your hero. Well, how many members are we on for... Don't worry about his channel, Kyle. <laughs> what, what's the number? For us, well, I've got plenty, I've got more to get through. I'm just trying to gauge. Off. I'm just trying to gauge whether people actually right, care about. I'll, Age of Sigma. I'll be completely honest with you. People, I love absolutely. I'm, I've even got the only things right in front of me here, and everyone's going. Do you know what? This actually looks pretty damn cool. So, I, so I actually right. Okay, a, a slight aside because this isn't a battle report. We're learning the rules. A slight aside, right? This is this is genuine, genuine, genuine story, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying. But my rep from GW, I was talking to him not too long ago, and he said genuinely that there is. There is, the community is crying out for an Age of Sigma content creator that's a bit more chill, relaxed, and does it to a relatively decent quality, right? There's a few out there already, but there's nowhere near as many as there is for 40k in general in terms of Age of Sigma content creators. It's a, it's a significantly less popular game for content on YouTube in general. Yeah. Now, it is certainly a space I've been looking at moving into for a very long time. I've told you all millions and millions and millions of times before, I'm a high fantasy over sci-fi person in everything other than my tabletop war games. It's always been the case. But I said to Josh earlier, right, and this is straight up, when I started playing, as an adult got back into the hobby, I started playing 40k. 
as a kid, when I got into the hobby, I started playing 40k, and I looked at um, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. I was like 11 or something. Mm. Fantasy Battle, when I was 11, was quite daunting. Yeah. It was, it was a lot, right? Yeah, no. It, very it was, yeah. tactical, very strategic. So I wanted the easier game, and I played 40k at the time. Uh, yeah. and we're talking editions ago, like third or fourth or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Um, when I came back to 40k, when I, when I was in the army for a while, a friend of mine was playing fantasy and wasn't playing 40k. I was playing 40k, wasn't playing fantasy. But we're like, we want to play. So he said, I'll do 40k army, you do some fantasy. This is at the end of 7th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle. 8th edition hit, I collected two armies. I had 2,500 two to 3,000 points of Empire, 2,500 to 3,000 points of High Elves, and, this will shock most of you, I'd even started painting it all. And then the end of 8th happened, and we all know what happened then. Right? They absolutely binned Warhammer Fantasy Battle. They stuck it straight in the trash. End times. They bought out The end times happened. They bought out Age of Sigma, and, and I'm sure GW probably themselves don't mind me saying right now, it was a hot mess when it came out. Yeah, it was. Didn't weird. even have points. No points values. No. Like, well, what do I take? Whatever you want. Well, how does that work? Just bring whatever you want. And so the community started to self-regulate. The community started to be like, oh, well, we'll bring 100 wounds each. That's how we'll try and balance it out because there's no yeah. such thing as points. Eventually, GW went, mm, we might have made a mistake here. And they did start to fix it. And I think this addition, from what I've seen, has actually been pretty decent on the whole. I think so. Some people don't like battle tactics, which is basically secondaries. Um, which we forgot to do. Spend me a, <laughs> spend me a CP, Kyle, because I'm going to auto run six for these guys. Because I can. Why not? Seven plus six is 13. Whoop, whoop. God, they're fast shifters, aren't they? <laughs> um, so, but some people don't like battle tactics because some of them can be quite uninteractive. Um, battle tactics are secondaries, right? Yes. Uh, you, the way it works here is rather than drawing a card or choosing a secondary that you do for the entire battle, what you do is you pick one thing from a list of one, two, three, four, five, six in this book. There's more in things like the General's Handbook. There's, you have your own specific secondaries in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you pick one, and then you have to achieve that in that turn. So just for the turn? Just for the turn. OK. And these are things like, pick one enemy unit wholly within your opponent's territory. You complete this tactic if that unit is destroyed during this turn. OK. And then you'll score two points if you do that. That's cool. Hmm. Uh, Slay the Warlord, seize the center, repel. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah. Did you say slay the Warlord? What was that you just said? Slay the Warlord. You complete this tactic if the model chosen to be your opponent's general is slain. Oh my god! Turn. The prodigal son returns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like I said, these are in the core book. There's the general's handbook ones, and there's the ones that you stop, specifically stop. have. You've already got them. But you said slay the Warlord, and I ejaculated a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First Blood, Slay the Ward on Line Breaker. No, uh, sadly, it's not as good as that. Is there, but is yeah, it, is there so, a Maelstrom in there? There is not a Maelstrom in there. <laughs> oh. um, I think I'm going to pick the first one. Break their spirits. Yeah. Pick one enemy unit wholly within your opponent's territory, which is all of my can I, can I murder those? You can certainly give it the old college try. Is it possible? Try. Is it possible? Uh, you can give it a go. They're my Crypt Horrors. I don't know what they do. I just want to fight things. Yeah, it's doable. Okay, cool. So I've moved. And I used, I used a command point to all advance six inches, okay? Which means my movement phase is complete. And there's things that I can do in my movement phase. At the end of any phase of any wounds, once per battle at start, if this unit is destroyed by one, no, 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 no. You can, if you carry out a stomped monstrous rampage with this unit and the enemy unit you picked has a wounds characteristic of one, that enemy unit suffers D6 mortal wounds on a two pluses to D3. Oh, that's quite good, isn't it? Which one's this? Oh, this is your... Yeah, Ariola. Is this the Talon of the Dwindling? No, Living Battering Ram. Oh yeah, this is your charge. Right, anyway, here. so we're going to shoot at you now, and I yep. have a Spear of Kurnoff, right? Yes. It's a reasonable range, 24 inches. <laughs> it's a single attack, it hits on a two, it wounds on a two, it has a rend of minus two, and it has a damage of six. Does range attack damage spill over as well? It does. Well, this is just simpler, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah. Is there any bit. such thing as I can't target you because you're within three inches or you've got a silly stratagem or you're a lone operative? Uh, yes, it's called Lookout, sir. It's for my small, um, small units, small mm. heroes. So it would be things like the Vargulf Courtier. I'll read out Lookout, sir, for you. Yes, please do. You must subtract one from the hit roll for an attack made with a missile weapon if the target is an enemy hero within three inches of an enemy unit that has three or more models. The Lookout, sir, rule does not apply if the enemy hero has a wounds characteristic of ten or more. I believe, this is great. Job. I believe. Why haven't we just been playing this all the time? 
<laughs> I believe in the. I believe in the. Um, uh, what's it called? A in, thing called love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just listen to the rhythm of your heart. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. Um, so I believe in the core rules on here and the updated core rules. We go in here and I look up lookouts. Uh, um, it does also stipulate uh, as a uh, little change. Yeah. It also cannot be targeted by attacks made with wep missile weapons if the attacking model is more than 12 inches away from them. Okay. Uh, this is the Age of Sigma app, by the way, which was out long before the Warhammer 40k app, and basically the same. It, it's, I think it's actually a little bit better. I think it's a little bit better. I do think it's a little bit better. It is a little bit better. But it's basically, like, like if you use the 40k app, it will make sense to you, I reckon. Yeah, Al although the new Battle Bunker is really good. Yeah. So I'm going to throw a spear at you now, and I can throw a spear at anyone. Mm -hmm. who, do I want to, who do I want to throw a spear at? How many wounds has that little gribbly grubbly there got? That is a Vargulf courtier. Mm, he has <laughs> uh, he has eight wounds. Oh, I can't kill him in one go. You could just throw it at the people you intend to charge. Let's do that. I'm going to hit you, sir, on a two. Yes. You missed. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, do it melee, won't I? Yeah. Yeah. Can you shoot if you run? Uh, unless you specifically says you can, no. Cool. That's what I wanted to check. Okay, cool. So I can't. I ran everything else. Yeah. Uh because -huh. because trees be shuffling. Mm -hmm. Ents are slow. So <clears throat> I can't do any of my other shooty powers uh, because it doesn't say I can shoot and run. Yes. So both my tree lord and my spirit of dirty verdant blast actually isn't all that bad. It's pretty good. The strangle roots is actually okay as well. You but can yeah, we're shoot into combat and all that as well. What? So you, you, there's no like if you're if you've got a missile weapon and you're in combat, you can't not you just can't shoot. So I could just archer into combat. Yeah. Is there a risk of hitting your own guys? No. <laughs> so a unit that is within three inches of any enemy units can only target enemy units that are within three inches of it. Can Makes you sense. can you shoot out of combat? Uh, no, you can only, you only target units within three inches. So you could just lock someone up in combat, and then you can just wail on them from from from, yeah, like from afar as well. Alariel is going to charge now. Okay. Because we've done the shooting phase. I missed with the one. Great. But now we're into the charge phase. Okay. Yep. Now you've told me already this is quite different. It isn't. It isn't. So basically, you tell me that you wish to charge. Yes. You just roll the dice. You don't have to tell me where you're going, who you're targeting, why, what your motivations are. You know, you don't have to do that. You just roll the dice. In your charge phase, you can pick a friendly unit that's within 12 inches of an enemy unit to attempt to charge. You then pick another friendly unit within 12 inches of an enemy unit to attempt to charge, and so on, until you have attempted to charge with as many units as you wish. A unit can't attempt to charge more than once in the same phase. When you attempt to charge with a unit, make a charge roll for that unit by rolling 2d6. You can then make a charge move with each model in that unit by moving the model a distance in inches that is equal to or less than the charge roll. The first model in your, uh, you move in the unit attempting to charge must finish the move within half an inch of an enemy unit. If this is impossible, no models in the unit can make a charge move. Doesn't tell you you have to declare a target. Nope. And then gamble. Yep. So you can think to yourself, there's a unit within four inches there. Mm -hmm. There's a unit nine inches over there. Mm -hmm. I really want the nine inches. But I've also got this safety net. I'm just going to attempt to charge. Yeah. I've rolled a four, I'm just going over there. Or I've rolled a nine, I'm going all the way over there. Or I've rolled a 12 and I'm going all the way over there. Yeah. Yeah. That's... You can use the following command abilities in the charge phase. Forward to victory. You can use the command ability after you make a charge roll for a friendly unit. That unit must receive the command. You can re-roll the charge roll for that unit. So everyone has re-roll charge. You can use this command ability after you make a charge roll for a friendly unit. Okay. You can use this command ability. Unleash hell is Overwatch. Yeah. Essentially. Which you can't do. Which I can't do. And Overwatch only keys off once you've made the charge roll. And Forward to Victory only keys off once you've made the charge roll and failed. Yeah. So I am going to just roll a charge roll. Yeah. Because I don't need to measure it yet. We've got a seven. Devin. Yeah. So you can go, you could go there or you could go there. Oh. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. You did pick them to kill though. I did pick them to kill, so it makes sense to come over here, otherwise I won't get to my battle tactic, aka secondary, that I select every turn rather than locking myself in right at the start of the game and going, damn, I picked bad ones. Bingo. Love it. I'm actually already a fan of this. I hope that I need to speak to GW, because I want, I want I need the new edition to not be too different. <laughs> hey guys, could we just not? Because if, if I'm like, oh, I love this new Age of Sigma, they go, here's a new edition, it's completely different to the last one, I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. Right, so, I have two melee weapons, right? Yes. So now we're going to go into combat phase. Right, we've made our charge, mm -hmm. we've done our command abilities, we're going to go into the combat phase. 
In the combat phase, the players alternate picking a friendly unit to fight, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. It'd be me. Yes. So, so if we had multiple combats, you would, and it's your turn, you would pick, then I would pick. You would pick, then I would pick. So it's not like I charge with everything, I go with everything, you lose all your models, and then you don't get to play. It's exactly correct. This is made by <laughs> this is made by people that like tabletop war games. Yes. Yeah. When it is your turn to go, pick a unit to fight. You must either pick one eligible friendly unit to fight, or you must pass. A unit is eligible to fight if it is within three inches of an enemy unit, and it is not fought in that phase, or it has made a charge move in the same turn that is not fought in that phase. You cannot pass if there is a friendly unit that is eligible to fight. When you pick a unit to fight, you can make a piling move of each model in that unit. See one point two point two, and then you must make combat attacks with the models in that unit. And yep. The unit has fought. Okay. A pile is up to three inches. When you make a pile of move, it must finish the move no further from the nearest enemy unit than it was the start of that move. So you can actually just use it, but you can't be further. Okay, well, I'm, I'm good. We're fine. We'll yeah, still where I we mean, are. you could, like, you could do three inches Shuffle along. as a direct across. Yes. As long as you're no further away, you're all good. After you've made a pile of moves, you can make combat attacks with each model in the unit within range of an enemy model. C13.1.2. Mm -hmm. So this is where one of, the, one of the tactical things, which obviously we'll get into a little bit later, um, You've made the charge. If you were, say, wanted to hit the thing that's behind them, you could pile, you could move your pile in, and then you could use the range of your weapon to see if you're in range of the thing you want to hit. So when you have a three-inch range weapon, I like this. So you've made your charge here. So like right? Durthu's got a three-inch range weapon, for example. Yes. So Durthu could come here, right, and charge my crypt guard right here in the front. Yeah. But because his weapon is three inches range, he can hit Usharan. That's silly. I like it. I'm a yeah. fan of it. I like it a lot. Okay, right, so... I have things I can do because I'm a monster as well, right? A monstrous rampage. A monstrous rampage. A battle cannon. Right, uh... Random range, random... Where is monstrous rampage? Can you find it for me? Monsters do I do it rampage. before I fight? Yeah, it will be. At the end of the charge phase, each player can carry out one monstrous rampage from the table below with each friendly monster. So I can, might be able to do it with Usharan as well. I don't see why I would. Yes, he is a monster. So you have, it's on page 272. Got it. Cool. Uh, you have Raw, pick one enemy unit within three inches of this model and roll a dice. On a three plus, that unit cannot issue or receive commands in the following combat phase. Oh. Which is pretty good. Uh, pick Stomp, pick one enemy unit within three inches of this model that is not a monster and roll a dice. On a two plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. I think I'll do that one. Well, are you sure? <laughs> no. But I get to stomp on you, so probably. You can stomp, right? But this is where combat phase tactics come in, right? Is if you stop me from receiving commands, it means I can't then make them plus one to save. Because we have command abilities, right? And in the fight phase, you have one and I have one. So you can... I suppose you think you're clever, don't you? Well, there's all-out attack and all-out defense, right? What's all-out attack do? All out attack is you can use this command ability when you pick a friendly unit to shoot in your shooting phase or fight in the combat phase. That unit must receive the command. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of that phase. More like that. All out defense. You can use this command ability when a friendly unit is picked as the target of an attack in the shooting or combat phase. That unit must receive the command. Add one to save rolls for attacks that target that unit until the end of that phase. Okay, so the other two rampages we've got is a Titanic duel where you pick another monster and fight it and a smash to rubble, which is to do with terrain features. I'm going to roar at you. I don't yeah. want you to have that plus one save because I just looked at the rend that I have. Yeah. So I'm going to roar it. You want a three plus? Whoop. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to spend a command point or all out attack to give her plus one to hit because I've noticed that Ariola to hit in the fight phase is on three pluses. So now she's two pluses. So now she's two pluses and we've seen how well I'm rolling. <laughs> Lol. Okay. So what we do then when we go into the attack sequence. But right, you have one last thing to do in your... What's that? I know, that was if you carry if out I'm, a stomp. Yeah, if I carry out a stomp, right? And you need to be a one wing model anyway for it to be... Um... That's true. When a friendly unit fights, you must make combat attacks with all of the melee weapons. Look at that. You yeah. just pick one. They are armed with, uh, they're allowed to use, including weapons, weapons used by the unit's mounts mount of their enemy. The target of the combat attack must be within a number of inches to the attacking model equal to the range characters of the weapon being used. So it doesn't require you, if you are making attack, like, like Josh was saying, with a three inch range weapon in melee, you don't have to be attacking the unit that you actually charged. You can be attacking a unit next to it or behind it, as long as that melee range is fine. So if you're attacking something on a 25 mil base, for example, it's very conceivable that you could go through that unit and hit the one behind it, because yeah. it's actually within range of your big spear or your pike man or whatever it is you might be using, because mm -hmm. that makes sense. 
Um, you can use any of the, and all of your melee profiles. It says that if you can attack, you must attack, and you can use both melee profiles, right? Yep. The number of attacks is on the profile. You can make combined attacks if all the attacks are made by models from the same unit. Not an issue right now, but if I was charging with these three dryad tree man, I could, and each one of them's got a number of like three attacks, I can add them all together, roll nine, because they all have the exact same profile. That's correct. Which allows yeah. me to fast roll, essentially. Yeah. Okay? Right, cool. So, hit roll, wound roll, save roll. It's pretty simple. We're going to just go through that. We're not going to read this out in depth. This is probably pretty standard for everybody. The only difference between 40k is the wound roll is predetermined. You don't have to measure it against a toughness chart, right? Mm -hmm. So Alara Ariola, she has the Talon of the Dwindling and the Great Antlers, right? Well, she doesn't have the Great Antlers. The big bug she's riding does. Yeah. So we'll start off with the Talon of the Dwindling. She has four attacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's not so good in melee, is she? Uh, well, she's we, not. The bug is. That. At the end of any phase, if any wounds inflicted by this unit's talent of the dwindling in the phase were allocated to an enemy model and ne not negated, and that enemy model is not being slain, roll a dice on a six plus is slain. That's pretty dirty, isn't it? Mm. So she has four. It says I've got four attacks. She uses four attacks. Simple as that. It yeah. says I hit on a three plus, but I used all out attack as a stratagem. So, command ability. Command ability. So I hit on two pluses. Good! That's <laughs> why, Josh. That's why we spent the command point. Okay, so she's hit you twice. This isn't flat. This is your problem. I don't think it matters. <laughs> Josh has been here one day and he's noticed how they have dice boxes. That's a Josh problem. A Joe problem. Right, so it's a wound of four plus. It doesn't matter what your toughness is because you don't have a toughness. That's correct. Cool, so four pluses. We did one! We did one, chat! <laughs> okay. The rend is nothing. Yep. I have a save of five plus. A fail. How much damage is it? It's one damage. Okay. But there's that risk at the end of the fight phase if it's not died. Yeah. It could die. Yes. Okay, cool. We then have the great antlers. So the bug is now going to headbutt you. It also has four attacks, Mr. The Hipster. It normally would hit on three pluses, but all that attack applies to the model. So I hit you on twos. Yeah, I also need to just check one thing about ward saves. I don't think you do them in the same. Uh, I've hit you four of the times. <laughs> four of the times. You've hit me four of the times with the bot. With the, with the, with uh, <laughs> some abilities allow you to roll a dice to negate a wound before it is allocated to the model. Abilities of this type are referred to as wards, and the, the dice roll is referred to as a ward roll. Up to one ward roll can be made for each wound or mortal wound before it is allocated to the model in question. If the ward roll is successful, the wound or mortal wound is negated and has no effect on that model. So I do have an army wide. Um, Six plus ward, which I should just roll for. So it's like I feel no pain then. It is a little bit. I thought it was like, I thought ward was an invulnerable save. Uh, no, it just happens all the time. It doesn't matter. After all that. So I've hit you four of the times, right? The yep. great antlers will wound you on a two plus. Because they're pretty great in antlery. Yep. <laughs> okay. We're doing this for you, chat. Good. Okay. The rend is minus two. I have no save. You have no save. So the damage, damage of the Great Antlers is on a chart. Now, because I've suffered no wounds so far, the damage of the Great Antlers is five. You can see how that would have been a big deal if I'd have wounded with all four. Yes. Uh, six up wards. I make one, you kill a horror. How many of the wounds they each? A horror has four wounds each. So if I'd have rolled all of those as two pluses, yeah. you'd have been in a lot of trouble right then. Yes. We're making it a game for you, chat. <laughs> one of those things is not like the other. One of those things is squashed on a horn. Cool. Right, okay. Just for fun, roll that dice on a six and see if it kills another one. Why not? No, it doesn't. But uh, that model that took the wound would have died anyway. So actually, I'd have been better off doing the Great Antlers first, then doing the, the one yeah. damage ones, and then potentially getting... But that's, that's tactics that I'll learn in time, okay? Yes. So that is the end of my fight phase for me. Yep. But now, obviously, Mr. The Hips is in combat with Ariola. He gets to fight me back. I do. And I have two guys remaining. And I have eight, not eight attacks each, but four per model. What's their rend? Uh, their rend is nothing. Good. I'm... But improve the rend characteristic of this unit's melee weapons by one while it is wholly within six inches of any friendly courtiers or 18 inches of any friendly aberrants, which they are because the Vargul's courtier is right behind them. So okay. I'll be minus one. You'll be minus one. Cool. Um, Come sorry. at me! Uh, let me just... What was I about to check? I was about Your to check a thing. Penis. Well, you want to check in that. Uh, Demogorgon, thank you for the super chat. Um, he says, loving Mr. Josh on the channel. Can we keep him? 
I'd like to keep him. I don't yeah. think he'll move, though. It's a long way away. But Demogorgon, thank you for the super chat. And also thank you for the one gifted as well. Alex Randall, thank you for the one gifted. Simon Beatham, thank you for the one gifted. Siege Roots, thank you for the five. Siege! Crumpets Panda, thank you for the super chat. He said, bombardment. 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 <laughs> Crumpets Panda, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Jill, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. And then Dragon Slayer Ed, thank you for the super chat. He said, loving this. Can't wait for AOS 4. Need to get my Fire Slayers looking for more gold. Have them running with the OG Dwarf. Got wreck all the way. Oh, I love Fire Slayers. They are cool. I actually like Fire Slayers. Um, should I roll my text? Yes, how many do you have? I have eight in total. And I'm hitting you on fours. Four each, hit me on fours. You have hit me some of the times. I have. I'm... Exactly mathematically average, in fact. Yes. Look at you go. I have one six. This means that... Things and stuff happen. <laughs> it means that this one has a damage characteristic of three instead of two. Oh, okay. Uh, I also need to roll one more because the champion is still alive. Go on, the champion. Cool. So I'll roll these to hit uh, to wound, so I'll wound you on threes. Oh. I'll get one, and then this one, which is the damage three, doesn't do it. So I do one wound back. At minus one. At minus, mm, yeah, minus one. And Ariola has a three plus save. Yeah. So a four plus save. Go. Yes, Gaddy. Yes, there we go. Yes, Gaddy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's Perfect the fight thing. phase. Yep. Done. Yeah. I think we're finished. If we move into now battle the shock. battle shock phase, okay. That's going to go into the next stage of core fog. Battle shock phase. In the battle shock phase, the, mo the battle shock phase, a battle shock, the players must take a battle shock test for each friendly unit that had models slain in that turn. The player whose turn is taking place takes all the battle shock tests first, followed by the other player. I don't have any models slain, so I won't be taking a battle shock chat. Nope. You must make a battle shock test for each friendly unit that has to take a battle shock test. To make a battle shock test, roll, uh, roll a dice and add the number of models in the unit that were slain to in that turn to that roll. If the battle shock roll is greater than the unit's bravery characteristic, the battle shock test has been failed. If the test is failed, for each point by which the battle shock roll exceeds that unit's bravery characteristic, one model that unit must flee. You decide which models flee, a model that flees is removed from play. Yeah. So you've lost one model. What's your have... bravery of the unit? It's ten. So you can't actually fail. So 4 plus 1 is 5, yep. is less than is 10, he can't fail. Yep. If his battle shock had been, if his, if his bravery had been 4, which I assume is things like gloom spike gets, etc., and you'd rolled that thing, that'd be 1 over, you'd have lost another model. That's correct. Cool, okay. And that's how we do battle shock, right? There is a command ability for battle shock, inspiring presence. You can use this command ability at the start of the battle shock phase. The unit that receives the command does not have to take a battle shock test in that phase. Obviously, there's no point in you using it because you couldn't fail. End of the battle round is reached. Oh, we're not in the back round because we've got to go to the player turn two now. That is Sylvaness turn one. Yes, it's taken us ages. We're only going to be going for another hour or so, but we're just trying to demonstrate the core rules. So some of you, when we come in tomorrow and Josh and Joe play, it's a little bit quicker, have an understanding of some of what's going on. Yes. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah. Yay! And actually, I'm having fun, so it might be that we go into like 10 and we'll just tidy the table up tomorrow and then Lucy will still be happy. Yeah. It's all good. That's the thing. Everyone will have fun. <laughs> That's the main thing. <laughs> Everyone has fun until I close my bedroom door and she's like, right, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Put on the costume. You did bring, yeah, yeah. You did bring your headphones, didn't you, Josh? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. You told me those were crucial. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And your, and your eye mask. Yeah, yeah. It's just they're not noise cancelling, they're noise amplifying. We just made him a bed at the end of our bed like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you bring... Your rain mac. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, cool. Um, so that means we're going to go into Flesh Eater Courts, Zombie Men, turn one. Team correct. Red, turn one. Yes, Gaddy. And uh, we both gain a command point, which the system does for us automatically. Ooh, yes. And we're done. Hero phase. Yeah, so I will do gain a command point with, uh, let's do the Abhorrent Arch Regent. He's standing up here mm -hmm. on the thing. See if that goes off. It does. So I gain a command point. What do I do? You can do the same thing. I can do want. the same thing. A battle cannon. I don't gain a command point. Boom. Uh, then I have a bunch of spells and stuff to do. Uh, I won't do all of them because we're going for speed, right? No, um, we're not. Well, not tonight. We're not. Well, we're go <laughs> well, we're going for fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's that. Yeah. We're doing that specifically. Yes. So what I will do is I'm going to do Usharan. I'm going to do Glimpse of Delusion. Oh. Uh, Glimpse of Delusion is a spell that has a casting value of seven. 
Da -da. Da -da. And a range of 18 inches. Ooh. If successfully cast, pick one mod enemy model within range and visible to the caster. Then pick one melee weapon that enemy model is armed with and pick one other enemy unit within range of that weapon. That enemy model immediately makes combat attacks with that weapon targeting that other enemy unit. I don't know what you just said to me. Do you remember the Thousand Suns uh, thing of traitors? Where well, you could make a vehicle shoot at another one? Yeah. Okay. I can do that to you with a melee weapon. Oh. Um, and I can do that with Usheron, who is over here. That's his spell. Where is he? He's here. That cheeky chap, yeah, okay. Uh, and he has a range of 18, and I am going to pick Durthu. So okay. on a seven, Durthu is going to smack his own Kurnoth Hunters. Wow, you say that. You're going to unbind. unbind. We're going to try. Yeah. So roll two dice, and it does not go off. Narrow escape. <laughs> so for reference, he had a cast value of seven. It's a psychic test like old editions of 40k. Yeah. Um, but in the magic section, which is under Wizards on page 268 of the current rule book, you can unbind spells. You have to be within 30 inches, which obviously Ariel is, Alariel yeah. is, and then but all I have to do essentially is beat your roll, don't I? Yes. That's right, I think it must be equal to, make an unbinding roll by rolling 2d6. If the unbinding roll is greater than the roll used to cast a spell, the spell is unbound and its effects are not applied. The number of spells a wizard can attempt to unbind is noted on their war scroll. Only one unbinding attempt can be made for each spell. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, we would have tried to unbind it because I was 30 inches away from him and I'd be like, BRAIN POWERS! That's how, that's how she talks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shall, I, shall I do? Hmm. I could do deranged transformation, I suppose. Oh. Uh, pick one friendly wound characteristic. That's what we call Joe getting dressed. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Woodall, thank you for the super chat. Said shakes fist in old man. So like, <laughs> Great job, Liam and Hipster. Now I'm going to have to look into AOS and the law. I hope you are both happy and proud of yourselves. I see big grumpy trees in my future. Yeah, you do. I'm just putting that. Do it. <laughs> I was airbrushing my Sylvaneth this morning. What colour? Brown. <laughs> I saw that in the face. I'm like, what colour are you going? So, you, yeah, one of the veins. Have, have you seen a tree? I think it was Richard. <laughs> I, love, I love all of the veins. I think it was Richard who said, what scheme are you going for? I was like, tr tr have you seen a tree? <laughs> <laughs> I go for that Brown. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do deranged transformation, and yeah. I am going to do it on the crypt horrors who you just hit. Oh. Uh, this means that they will gain two inches to their move characteristic, but also more importantly, plus one to wound rolls. Ooh. This goes off on a six. A casting value of six. Okay, so this is important because on a 10, if the casting roll was 10 or more, you can pick up to three different friendly units to be affected by the spell instead of one. Right. So that goes off on an 11. I'm going to try and dispel it because I have three dispels at, my, at well. my disposal. So I might as well try and... Stephen Boxcars. No. No, it was as useful as him. So I'm just going to... Pick the Crypt Horrors, who are the ones you hit, obviously, because they were the target, these guys here. Yeah. Uh, we'll do the Ghouls, and we'll do the Vargulf Courtier as well. Lots of plus one of wound over there. And plus two inches to the move characteristic, not that it matters for the Horrors. That makes me scared. Yes. I'm scared right now. So, I've got more spells. We've got Abhorrent Arch Regent with Carrion Call. Is a spell that has a casting value of six, if successfully cast in the... Following movement phase, friendly fleshy to quartz units that are set up at the end of the movement phase can immediately move d6 inches. It's actually not that. It'll be more important in turn two if we get there, because I've got stuff in reserve. Is it still reserved from turn two onwards? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so we'll just do Mystic Shield with the Abhorrent Arch Regent, uh, and we'll do it on the Morbeg Knights that are just behind them. So okay. Yeah. So you can actually put your Psychic Shield on another unit? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, it goes off on a five. Underarm. It's a strong start. Yay! Yay! We unbound something. This is my forest. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might as well cast Carry and Call then, because he can do two. Uh, it goes off on an eight. Oh, does it? Yay! He's one dice. Oh, oh yeah, it does, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that's important is for me, that means I generate things called Noble Deeds points. That's how I get stuff for my army list. But again, not entirely important for this yeah, uh, yeah. game round. It does mean I can super power up at certain times with something called free Feeding Frenzy, which means everything can gain plus one attack. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> there's, Carl, there's 41 messages in the only things. I know. Oh dear. Are they excited about Age of Sigma? That, he, Apparently so, there's 41 I mean, messages. I'm, 
Bear in mind, I'm keeping on chat, chat, and chat. Yeah. <laughs> and chat, chat, chat. And yeah, they, chat, chat, they look at things. They're, they're all super excited. Chat, chat, chat. Chat, chat, chat. chat, 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 chat. Um, <laughs> the Abhorrent Gore Warden isn't here, so he can't cast any spells. I don't have any other spellcasters around. Round, round, I get around. I get so around. it is now time for yeah, my. Around. It is time for movement phase. Whoop, whoop. Demogorgon, thank you for the one Warhips to membership. Oh. Hero. That's right, we got one out of them too. Do you want to let me down, chat? What an absolute lad. Is there no, if anyone's got anything they want to ask anyone on the show tonight, all you've got to do is throw it on the super chat as well. I hate how the scoreboard doesn't line up when we haven't used the proper army from 40k. It really makes me angry. I mean, do what you could do. Just not look at it. I could. This, no. this is this is a this is a fun night, Liam. It makes me itch. I mean, I was looking at it just a minute ago, like. Mm, it so. really makes me itch. But so. this is the best I could do today with the, with what we have. So, so I do believe I cannot move within three inches of you. Why? Right. So I have to be able to fail the charge. Oh really? That's cool. I believe that's the case. So you I'm can't make sure. it an unfailable charge. Yeah. Titans are in the chat, by the way. Titans. Yeah. The Titans of tabletops. Which one? Tabletop. Does it just say Titans? Tabletop Titans. Oh, it means it's Adrian. Hey, Adrian, miss you. I haven't spoken to him for a while, actually. And we need a call. It's been too long, Mr. The Adrian. It's been too long. Call me. Call me. Normal move. Units cannot move within three inches of enemy units when making a normal move. So you can actually make it a failable charge. Yeah. I'm into that. Yeah. I'm actually really into that. That's pretty good, isn't it? I, good, this isn't it? is. Good. This is in. This is genuinely quite interesting. The, the reason why I find this quite interesting, um, whilst, whilst Mr. The Hipsters is movement face chat, is because this is made by the same company that makes 40k, right? <laughs> um, no, 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 I'm being serious now. Though. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Ge genuinely, like, truthfully speaking, this is made by the same company that makes 40k, but interestingly, it's made by a different studio. So in the main design studio for their main games, and their main games being predominantly 40k and Age of Sigmar, there is two separate design studio that works within that specific um, that specific team. One works on 40k, one works on Age of Sigma, right? And then you've got specialist games, which is um, who do things like um, uh, Horus Heresy and Old World. Now what's interesting is, uh, although they are working for the same company, they seem to, at least in my opinion, there seems to be a very different ethos in how these games are built. Now there might be a number of reasons for this. I suspect that part of the reasoning behind it is also because Age of Sigma does lack a significant amount of shooting. So for example, if you allowed every unit to be able to move within an unfailable charge range, it's kind of GG's at that point, right? Because you yeah. just make your charges everywhere. Um, but it, it just, I like, there's things that are in Age of Sigma that I was like, when they started announcing Simplified But Simple from 40K, mm. the 10th edition, I was like, ooh, we're gonna get the simplified version. Um, and then they just kind of didn't really achieve that. So, Damage Spilling Over, for example, was one that I was genuinely very hoping, I was hoping would happen in melee. Yeah. I wasn't so fussed about it in range, but in melee specifically, I was hoping for Damage Spilling Over. I'm gonna go for a journey around to the other You're side. You're more than welcome, we've got top down on. But yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that you have the same, the same company that seems to have two different design ethos. The other, the other question you could ask is, is that intentional? So is it more intentional now, for example, the 10th edition 40K is kind of their tournament focused tabletop game and maybe Age of Sigma, and this is the impression I'm getting with this, with what we're looking at anyway, is kind of more of your beer and pretzels game. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that might be an intentional design. It might be, they might be doing that on purpose. Like AOS is a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit kind of simpler. If you've had 10 beers, you can probably still play. Yeah. Some of the nuances of 40K in 10th edition, I feel like, especially for playing at an event, you can't really have 10 beers and, and play, you'd need to concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah. You know? actually... Interesting to know what chat thinks, especially a lot of our guys in, in the channel that are watching this right now have probably not played or thought about playing Age of Sigma. Um, so more more than I thought, to be honest. There are a lot of them are talking about it. And a lot of them... I, I, okay, so I've wanted to bring Age of Sigma to the channel for a very long time. Uh, because I like, like I said to you already, I'm more high fantasy than I am sci-fi. I've always been very cognizant of the fact that we have built a brand and a channel based on Warhammer 40k, and that our audience are very 40k people. And the last thing I want to do is murder my own, my own algorithm, or turn a lot of people away from the channel because they go, oh, he's an Age of Sigma channel now. Some channels, historically, 
have made decisions where they've ditched 40K or they've ditched a gaming system and switched hard or pivoted hard into different systems, and it normally doesn't pay dividends. It's quite rare that, it, that their support continues at the same level it was before. It definitely takes a dip, you and then, it, that, then it, it perhaps takes some time to build back up again. Hmm. Now, with the studio in tow, we really can't afford to take that dip because that would murder us, quite frankly. Um, so I, it's one of those things I've wanted to bring, but I'm kind of like, I don't know how to do it. I'm not sure... So bringing Josh in was a perfect opportunity to go, you know what, we're going to give it a go. And I, th I feel like now we have the studio and we have the creative space in the studio, AOS version 4 is the perfect time to try and make it work if we're going to try and make it work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and also, the other, there's another big bonus as well, um, and it's you, wonderful person, sat over on the deck over there. Because I have another person, part of the channel, who's local. So if we want to make extra content, Joe hasn't got a necessary drive an hour and a half to do it, you know... There's things we can probably create, just the two of us for pre-recorded content. I mean, yeah, well. we can just throw, we can just throw some dice on the, on the camera, can't we? Yeah, on a Saturday, for example. Yeah. Because you know, you, if you're free, you're down the road. It's going to be easy to make more content if you're up for it. I'm, I'm always up for it. Always. Uh, up Martin for Waller, thank you for the super chat. Said, loving the AOS content. Learning the game has totally changed my enjoyment of the hobby for the better. I want to play on that board. Oh, thanks, Martin. Well, you're welcome to. So, Martin is a person we're going to get in to do a talk show with, um, and we'll get him to play some major Sigma as well because he's mad for Age Sigma. Your, Martin's story is, one, is a story that I've heard incredibly commonly since 10th edition. Yeah. Uh, there's a number of people who were 40k people, and this is another thing that's piqued my interest in this, a number of people that are 40k people that when 10th edition's come out, then they've made their own personal choice where they don't particularly enjoy 10th. That's fine, not every game's for everyone, that's just a fact of life, that's always going to be the case. And they've pivoted away from 40k into, into Age of Sigma, and there isn't, that, I, I don't know a single person who's made that choice and gone... It's also terrible. Mm. Like every single person has gone, oh, I'm really enjoying this. It's fun. Yeah. And Martin's one of those, one of the things that I think is, is really incredible about Martin's story, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. He's put it on social media, so I feel like he'd be okay with me sharing it. It's not only did he change from 40K to, to Age of Sigma, but he's also managed to get his wife involved. And so, who hasn't never been involved in the hobby before, and they recently, a few weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months ago, went to a, an Age of Sigma doubles event at Warhammer World. And she came away from that and was like, when can we go to the next one? Nice. Now, I think that's really cool. That is really cool. That's really cool. If you can get your, if you can get your other half involved, who's then, she's painted her own models. It makes me sick because she's painted models prettier than I probably can. <laughs> um, but she's had a good coach. But getting her involved, the, the hit, like I can't imagine trying to get Luce involved in 10th edition 40k. Yeah. Genuinely. Like, I've, I've said to her, on the 30th of April, it's a Thursday. Josh. And we normally stream a live game of 40k. Okay. It also happens to be... <laughs> My 13th wedding anniversary. <laughs> so I have two choices. Choice number one is I take the night off and we go for a nice fancy meal. Mm -hmm. Choice number two is I play loose on stream. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I, that, that's the way I'm trying to go, but I think she's having none of it. <laughs> Pretend that it's a romantic candlelight Please, dinner. please, please let me produce that. <laughs> please. I would love to be here for that. As long as you put like candles there and candles there. You, I hope she's not watching this. You can produce that, Kyle, if at the same time what we can do is we can use our little kitchen to make some kind of weird fancy three-course meal say, yeah. and we could bring the courses I, out I, during I, the I would wear the alpha I'm like, la, 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 la. <laughs> yeah. Like, see, it is a meal. Look, Kyle's been cooking for us in our air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> bon, bon appetit. <laughs> right, Mr. The Josh, you've done some moving. I have. I'm afraid. Uh, I don't, it's my shooting phase now. Oh. I don't have any shooting. Oh, good. <laughs> so, it's now my charge phase. Okay, good. So I'm going to start left to right. I'm going to charge with the Morbeg Knights. You've got nine. That's a nine. Rob's favourite number. Where would you like to go? Um, I think we'll go... All the way round? No. To my tree pool. We're going to go like this. That's tree people. Your tree people. <laughs> <laughs> All the tree pull. Yeah, exactly, see? So many. That's a Silver F song. So you can hear it whistling through the woods. What's the what's the range on these? Uh 17. No, as, as in the, the weapon range. Oh. Uh, Kern of Hunters with great swords is a one-inch range. Cool. Just one inch actually. And you just need to make sure that you're three inches away because otherwise you can elect them to just pile in and hit me. That was a good choose tonight. Because you would be within range. Love and you're not within piling. range now, so you can't do it. Talking uh, about anniversaries, I love a three-inch piling. <laughs> Royal Decapitator, <laughs> who's this guy, just in here. I knocked Trevor. He's also going to charge. Is he? 
on an eight. Acht. But I'm second favourite number. Yeah, he gets in. Just there. No. Like so. Lovely. Vargolf Courtier. This guy. Here. He's going to charge. The little skulky dude. Yeah. He gets a 10, actually. On a 10. He's going to go just like this. I love the fact that you just roll the charge and then decide what you're going to do. Yeah. I love it, too. Um, Abhorrent Arch Regent, just here. This guy. He's going to charge. No, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, the Crypt Guard, who are these gribbly gribblies, they are going to charge on a seven. Yes, yeah, so they're going to go... And I'm right in thinking that your Stormcast Army tomorrow night actually has a lot more range weaponry, isn't it? It does. It has at least 100% more we way range weapons than I have in this army. Currently. So it will be a different type of game tomorrow as well. Yeah. Which um, is cool. So these guys I'm into it. go in here to... I dig it. A la, a la Riel. The Ever Queen. 48 messages in only phase now, Kyle. Areola. They're charging into Areola. They are. Uh, They're all talking about this, so. The, que right. the question is is, is Usharan the Summer King? 42, meaning of life. Going to be the cheeky chappy that we all know him to be. Whee! You want him to charge some dryads? Yeah. So, one of my favourite things in the book of the uh, Crone Seer. One that's coming up, the Dawnbringers book. Might already be out now, actually. Um, and in customers' hands. No. Yeah. There's a story in it about, in the previous book, Usharan took a silver bullet to the chest. And um, he's not hurt. He's just not. But he's pretending to all the ghouls that he's on death's door so that they carry him around because he can't be asked to walk. <laughs> So they're all carrying him around on this funeral thing. Quick, someone shoot Joe with a silver bullet. Being like, oh, the Summer King is dying. And he's just lying there, just like, <laughs> suckers, I don't have to walk. Um, which is fantastic. He's going to charge. Is he? He's going to go a good five. five. Oh, I don't know. So he might not make it within half an inch there, but he might. Yeah, he's going to have to go that way, unfortunately. That's a shame. What was your battle tactic? Oh, yeah, I didn't choose one. <laughs> <laughs> After reminding us to do it, <laughs> I'll pick one. Uh, I'll put you back, Josh. Don't you worry. A battle tactic. I'll do seize the center. Um, yeah, I'm sure you will now, yeah. <laughs> you can pick this tactic if there are more friendly than enemy models within six inches of the center of the battlefield at the end of this turn. Okay. So I have to kill dryads. Uh, the crypt ghouls over there are going to charge. They're going to go. A mighty three. I mean, they'll make it to Ariola. Yeah, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm going to bother. Okay. I'm just going to stand there. Okay. Um, okay. So, your turn to pick a unit to fight. Yes. However, if you go to the charge phase in your core rulebook, the charge phase. Yes. The charge phase. The charge phase. The charge phase. I am at, not the charge phase. I am now at, not the charge phase. I am now. At the charge phase. Yes. Look at your command abilities. Forward to victory. You can use the command ability after you make a charge roll for your friendly unit. You can receive the command. You can reroll the charge roll for that unit. Mm -hmm. Unleash hell. You can use this command ability after enemy unit finishes the charge move. The unit that receives this command ability must be within nine inches of the enemy unit <laughs> and more than three inches from all enemy other units. The unit that receives the command can shoot in the shoot phase, but when it does so, you must subtract one from hit rolls for its attacks and it can only target the unit that made the charge move. Yeah. So would Durthu maybe like to do that? With his verdant blast. So this is a charge move. The unit that receives the command must be within nine inches of that enemy unit and more than three inches away from all other enemy units. But he has to be more than three inches away from all other enemy units. From all other enemy units. Excluding the one that he's been charged is how I understand that. But he's been charged by two. Yeah, so he could have done it after... After the... Oh, uh, yes, let's do that then. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So if they'd have charged him before the other guy charged in, I could then have done it with Dirthy. That makes sense. So I'm going to use my Verdant Blast. It's a blast that is verdant. Yeah. Okay. So far, I have lost no wounds, which means if I look at my table, the Verdant Blast has six of the finest attacks. Yes. It has a hit roll of a four plus. However, because you're unleashing hell, it's minus one to hit. So I hit you on fives. 
it, it was all right. I got two. Yeah. Just the two, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, the Verdant Blast, the blast that's Verdant, wounds you on a three plus. I have wounded you twice. The Ren, sir, yeah. is minus Juan, our favorite Mexican. Okay, so I have a save of four plus, so this is on fives. I failed them both. It is a mighty two damage each. Two damage each. I get my wards. I don't make any of those. So you kill a Morbeg Knight. Yes. Just the one. Just the one, actually. Let's go with the toot toot toot. toot. Just the one knight, actually. And, hey, and you do a wound to another one. Because it carries over. Because yeah. it carries over. That was all right, wasn't it? Do that like that. That cost me a commandage pointage. Yeah. Now, in, in the Sylvaneth book, you have something called Gossamid Archers. I do, yes. Would you like to read out what they do with Unleash Hell? Just for the folks at home who are Just, considering starting Sylvaneth. I love Sylvaneth. This is my army of choice, by the way, chat. This is why, this is why Mr. The Chris lent it to me, because I'm building one at home all by myself. All by myself. Don't want to be. It'll be this all way. All by myself anymore. Gossamid Archers. Uh, right. Just over here. The Zephyr Spites mm -hmm. is the specific rule. After this unit has received the Unleash Hell command and all of its shooting attacks have been resolved, if this unit is within three inches of any enemy units, you can roll a dice. One or two plus, this unit can retreat. Yeah. So, so it just Overwatch, 12 inches away. Oh, <laughs> then move a flat 12. <laughs> I, think, I think Unleash Hell does uh, put some limits on the distance, but. Uh, sorry, uh, Retreat does put <laughs> limits on the distance. <laughs> oh my god. And there's two attacks per Gossamid Archer, yep. right? And if you successfully roll a six to hit, the target <laughs> unit suffers D3 mortal wounds and attacks equals ends. Yeah. They're a bit good, aren't they? They are very good. And they're cool. Yeah. Look at their little wingy flaps. Flappy wings. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of your work. Into it. Right, you've charged. Yeah. Now. This is actually different to the last charge phase because here comes the fundamental difference between uh, 40k and Age of Sigma. We talked about it briefly before. So in 40k right now, if you're normally a 40k fan, you have charged with one, two, three, four, five units. Yep. So in 40k, every single one of those units would have got the charge bonus, which means you gain the fight's first ability. That's correct. Age of Sigma, different. So he's charged with one, two, three, four, five units, and I am in combat with one, two, three units. Yep. So what will happen is, Josh picks a unit first and fights. I then pick a unit, then he picks a unit, then I pick a unit, then he picks a unit. Interestingly, he can also pick the unit that's already locked in combat. He doesn't have to pick a unit that's charged. He yeah. can pick any one of his units in combat, any one of them that are in engagement range, and choose to fight with that unit. Once he's picked one unit, it's then my turn. Then his turn, then my turn, then his turn, then my turn. Once I've run out, which I will do, because you've got more units in combat than I do, he then continues to pick his units until every single thing that's in combat has fought. Yeah. I, it's an interesting difference. I like it. I'm a fan of it. Yeah, it means like it, the, one of the core principles of playing Age of Sigmar is about asset management. Because if you commit too much, mm -hmm. you could lose everything. Yeah. If you don't commit enough, you just feed your units to your opponent. So, for example, he could make what would probably be a poor choice right now, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. and fight with his big jumble one mirror in the middle, That's right? Correct. Against the dryads. Which means I'm probably at that point going to go, well, I'm fighting with Dirthy. Yes. <laughs> and then your cavalry that charged Dirthy is probably dead. That's correct. Cool. And in 40k, if I didn't have two command points, you're like, well, I know I can charge and fight with everything before you get a swing. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Where would you like to start with? <laughs> I would like to start with the Morbeg Knights. Okay. Um, because, why not? Uh, I get plus one damage here because I'm a hollow mornist. That sounds like a thing yeah. that you can do. So it's my chapter tactic, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, remember when we had those? <laughs> In 40k? I remember. <laughs> remember Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, add one to damage characteristic of melee weapons used by friendly Hollow Morn Knights units that have made a charge move in the same turn. This ability has no effect on attacks made by mounts. No effect. No effect. Yeah. Uh, my Court of Delusion, because it wouldn't have mattered before, uh, I've got the Royal Hunt on. You beg your pardon? The Royal Hunt. Oh, okay. Add one to wound rolls for attacks made by friendly Flesh Eater Quartz units that target a monster. Oh. This is all stacking up now, isn't it? it it's all coming yeah. up Millhouse. This is how it is. He's trapped me here, chat. You've activated my trap card. I believe that's what people say. So, we have uh, 
we have the champion who has. Uh, so each of my more bag knights. One CP, all out defense. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will not do uh, all out attack with them. I will do that with the crypt guard probably. Can you only use each stratagem once per phase as, as 40k? Okay, well, not stratagem, but yeah, you know what I mean. Each command ability. A command ability. Ability that your commanders do. So, after this unit makes a charge move, <laughs> I, I completely <laughs> forget this. Uh, after this unit makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit that within one inch of this unit, that enemy unit cannot receive the unleash hell command in this phase. In addition, roll one dice for each model in that unit that is within one inch of that enemy unit. For each four plus that enemy unit suffers d3 more wounds. So I forgot about that part. So do you want to put your model back on then? Because no, I wouldn't no, have unleashed hell. No, it's fine. Uh, shrieking charge. I'm going to have two four pluses. You will, you will receive d3 wounds. Mortal wounds. On death, death. You reckon? It's Hammer of Wrath, basically. You reckon? You get one d3 mortal wounds. For one. <laughs> do you have a ward? I don't know what that means. If you have a ward save, it'll say this unit has a ward save. It doesn't the... say that. It can carry, a mon carry out monsters rampage. At starting movement phase, if it's wholly within six inches of an overgrown terrain feature, it doesn't matter. At once, add one to the tactical characteristic of this guided sword while the unit is wholly within nine inches of an overgrown lake and wildwoods. This is why the wildwoods are quite important, isn't it? Yeah. We will always be a wildwood. So we've got our actual attacks now. So the Morberg Knights, they have two attacks each, plus one for the champion. Champion! The mounts also have three attacks each, but you don't get an extra one for the mount because you don't have a champion mount. Okay. So we'll roll the champion, we'll roll the Morberg Knights. Um, Stop uh, trying to hit me first. and hit me! So we have Grizzly Lances, uh, two inch range, two attacks, three plus three plus minus one damage one. But because I'm Hollow Morn, it's damage two. Uh, Good start, isn't it? Yeah, that's not bad, is it? <coughs> hit just the four times, actually. Uh, wounding you on threes. Trees. Wounding me on trees. Get it? <laughs> one wound at minus one. <laughs> Which is not minus one, essentially, because I all out defended. That's correct. So I actually still have my three plus space marine armor. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> then we have the vicious claws and teeth. And we're hitting you on threes. Oh. That's pretty good. And then we have... Uh, wounding on threes. Ooh, look at that. That's better. Just the four, actually. Four, four wounds at minus one, but because of all out defense. I all out defended. I've got stiff bark. Oh no, two went three. So they're two damage each. Do they not get the plus one damage as well? Uh, no, because they are the mounts. So I've lost four damage. I am down to nine. Rom's favorite number. You've taken five. That works yes. in Sigma. Yeah. So what do I left? Yeah, yeah, but you've suffered five. Yeah. Because you count up. Oh, it tells you what to do. No, no more arguing. Yeah. I have been told, chat. Yeah. I've taken five. Yeah. Well, what are Dryads like? Uh, they're fine. They exist. They're fine. They are one of the models of all time. They are pretty pap, aren't they? Let's be honest. They have two attacks. They hit on fours. They wound on fours. Damage one. But, but... But, mm -hmm. what's this little cheeky chap do over here? So he's the royal decapitator. So I should like to decapitate him before he decapitates so he me. He three attacks, four plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus two, three damage. So he is quite spicy. At the end of the combat phase, if any wounds caused by this unit's headman's axe in that phase were allocated to an enemy hero, and that enemy hero has not been slain, roll a dice. On a five plus, that enemy hero is slain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him first. That's probably wise. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna try and chop his head off, all right? With do, 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 do. So I'm a monster, so I can do a thing and some stuff, can't I? You can do a monster's rampage. I can do a monster's rampage. And on it a is. two plus, that's a six, yeah. you will suffer some things. Now, if I carry out monster's rampage, or any other monster's rampage you can carry out with this unit, if you do so, pick one of you within three of this unit and roll a dice on a three plus, the strike last effect applies to the enemy unit in the following combat phase. Yeah, so you, I think, when did you do Monstrous oh, Rampage? Oh, you can carry out this Monstrous Rampage with this unit instead of any other. I didn't do that one. I did the Mortal Wound one. Uh, the, the, stomp one. the Stomp. Yeah, so D3 Mortal Wounds on you, sir. Yep. Whoop. Just the one, actually. Cool. I have it's my fine. six plus ward. You're rolling lots of ones tonight, chat. We're having fun. So I, take I have a, a Guardian Sword and my massive and bailing talons. Yes. I you. assume when you pick both of the weapons to fight, you have to pick them into the same... Nope. But, but like you, if you if I fight with one now, 
Yeah. I can't then go, oh, this one will then go into that unit. You have to select your units at the same time. I believe you do that. They yeah, do it that way, yeah. So I feel like I need this thing dead. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna murder him, I reckon. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. How many it? wounds has he got? How many <laughs> he wounds does he have? Four remaining. Oh no, this is a problem. We're gonna go brave, chat. We're gonna go, we're gonna tree murder. Yeah, do it. All right? Do it. Angry Ent is gonna put Guardian Sword into him. Yeah. And massive Impale and Talons into the other unit. Cool. Okay. And we're gonna kill everything. Watch this. Watch this. Hold my beer. This. I love Durthu, so I want him to do this. He hits you on the... Oh, this is a problem, actually. He hits on, th he hits on, he hits on threes. It's fine. We'll hit with at least one. I hit with two. There you go. It's a good start. The wound is just a three plus as well. Yeah. We'll wound with at least one. We've wounded with both. Cool. The rend is minus two. Minus two? Minus two. I have no save. That's a problem for you. Yes. Because I currently have... Nine of my wounds remaining, which means I've only suffered five, which means I'm in the top bracket, which means my Guardian Sword is a flat six damage, which means you've taken, sir, 12 splinters. That is, that is, that is correct. <laughs> well, one might say, Timber. Yeah. Timber! I'm going to decapitate the decapitator. All I have to do now is roll nine sixes. You'll be fine. He's dead. Oh, yeah, he's, he's very dead, Jim. He's dead, Dave. Yeah. Everybody's dead, Dave. And then, I assumed that he'd probably murdernate him. Yes. Before I looked at the hit and wound roll. So, <coughs> so now, we're going to look at the massive impaling talents that are hitting the other units. These are two attacks. These actually only hit on twos. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a shame, because the massive impaling talents is fun. They would have wounded on twos, and they're minus two, and they're flat through damage. Mm. That would have killed the unit. Doesn't it also have a... Kyle, can you stop flicking the magnet on the dice box? I, but that's what we do on this channel. <laughs> yeah, when I'm playing Joe or Brom, all right? Not when I'm playing Mr. the Hipster. Anyway, that's done. It's your turn to pick a unit. Excellent. So my next unit is going to be the Crypt Guard. Which are they? Which is this unit of Gribble Gribbles. The many men. Yes. Many men. Many, okay. many, many men. I, Mr. the Kyle, need to use the bathroom for a little wee wee, so I'm going to meet myself. Can you grab me a drink, please, sir? Can you me It's just Sprite, is that okay? Yes. I'll put the kettle to it. Ooh. So now it's just me, everybody. Da 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 da. Be funny. Say something funny now! Uh, why did the chicken cross the road? Go ahead. I don't know. Chickens, they do whatever they want, you know? Mm hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's probably the biggest letdown joke of the century. I'm trying to laugh. But kind of like my content. Hey! <laughs> that was funny, Josh. <laughs> More of that, please. <laughs> Fake laugh, hiding real pain. Morning Hammer, thank you for the one given membership. Uh, Jill, thank you for the super chat. She says, Any an anniversary stream, but only if it's done as dinner for one. Germany's traditional New Year's Eve show with a butler that gets drunker with every course served. I remember watching that. Have you ever seen that, Josh? Which one, sorry? Um, dinner for one is a... Show in Germany they did it New Year's Eve. So basically, it's exactly what she said. The, the, All right. The butler no, gets never... drunker with every course served. No, I've not seen that. Oh. Well, that is a shame. I need to get many things ready for this. You're getting ready for something magical to happen? Not necessarily something magical, just many dice. I have 20 of these. Dave Meekin, thank you for the one gives a membership. Oh. Johan Gustafsson, thank you for the super chat. He said, just ended my shift 10 minutes ago, and now I'm on my phone on my walk home, listening to the stream, and hey, wait, today's payday. Johan Gustafsson, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. You <laughs> Says Liam from the kitchen. Yes. Yes, please. Many men. I require more dice. Many, many, many men. So I have a question for the Liam Dempsey chat and the Warhips chat as well, if you want to. If you are interested in the AOS 4, what RB are you going to start working towards to get it ready? And you can't say, you can't say Skaven because that's, that's an easy cop out. Everyone's excited for Skaven. But you can say Stormcast and then you'll be one of my favourites. Because then, yeah, you'll, you'll just be... One of those people that just goes for like space greens. 
Alex Gourlay, thank you for the super chat. Says, Mr. The Kyle and Mr. The Hipster sound very similar. I keep thinking Kyle is talking to himself. <laughs> Ow. Oh, my knees. I normally sit down all day, so standing up for even a period of time is difficult. Going into the War Hipster chat, uh, Captain Mannerings, being a member for 11 months, has got himself a super chat. Said, why is Rogue One the best Star Wars movie? Listen. <laughs> Hey now. Listen. Cap Rogue One has ten has the last half an hour is one of the best Star Wars movies. The preceding, however long it is, abject disappointment. Bold claim con. Star Wars is a bit of a uh, bit of a um, taboo subject on my channel. Why? Because I love it and hate it. Don't we all? Yeah, I'm incredibly hypercritical of it. And it's probably unfair on Star Wars, to be honest. Uh, I hold it to a higher stand standard than I do any other piece of uh, content. Um, but that's because uh, they should just get it right. Oh, uh, yeah. And they, and, they, and they don't get it right. And I, Rogue One is an example of where they I, didn't get honestly, it right. I could have a very, very long conversation with you about Star Wars because I have some very, very strong opinions about that, those movies. <laughs> so, I think there's only I think there's only two good movies, okay. and the rest are terrible. Okay. Not terrible. The rest are all Thank you. varying degrees of not very good. Uh, okay, go on. Empire and uh, A New Hope. Okay. The rest of them all need work, shall we say? I mean, feedback. Empire and A New Hope need work in certain ways. But I do agree on a certain extent. So, anyway, thank you, darling. Liam is back, people. I am back. I noticed we're only on sixty-five of the five gift of memberships, Mister. Uh, technically, we're actually on seventy. We had five before. before oh, seventy. Uh, going towards the chat. No, it's, what's 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 the what's what's the on? Uh, More than seventy, isn't 60. it? Sixty. Definitely fifty because of James. Mister, the Warhips is on uh, seventy-six. You can do it, guys. Yo, Grimnar, <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for the super chat. Said he's been a member for seven months. Got himself a super chat. Said forgot I was a member here. Lol. Uh, <laughs> Reza Prime, being a member for twenty eight months. He's put rotating. Rotating. He's rotating. He's rotating. He's rotating. He's he's one. One. Cameron, he's thank you for being a member for ten months on the Warhips channel. He said I will defend Revenge of the Sith until my dying breath. I am controversial. What is your controversial? I just like all the Star Wars films. If Fair. you just accept the fact that they're basically a bit trash, and it's just, yeah. it's just an armchair film, it's cool. And yeah, and that's the bit I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> because, because to me, it was like this is the this is like the art house. This is the pinnacle of sci-fi when I was when I was a dot. Yeah, of course. So now as an adult, I'm like, why are you not the same? <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched the new ones, the the more recent ones in the cinema. Most of them. Yeah. And actually, on the whole, I, I came out of them and I just looked at the reviews, and the reviews were scathing. I was like, I actually quite enjoyed it. It had lightsabers and guns and planes and boo boo, and I was happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that that is how we should consume it. If I approach, like, basically, what I what I figured out was, if I sat there like I was a child in the cinema, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. If I analyse it as an adult, they're all terrible. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's the, that's the problem. Um, remind me what All Out Attack does. All that attack is plus one to your hit roll in either the shooting or fight phase. So that's what I'm going to do with the crypt guard. One CP for Mr. The Josh. Yes. For all out attack. And we're going to hit Alariel well, with that's... 41 cursed weapon attacks. Yeah, okay. Oh? Yes. I heard you think you're big, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. But it turns out I'm little. What do you hit uh, on normally, sir? I normally hit on threes. But so you now have twos. On twos. Oh my god. Yes. Don't worry, they're not that. They're not that. Good. That's many hits, big wow. That is quite a lot of hits. <laughs> <laughs> You've hit me with 36 of the finest attacks, sir. Yes. Now this is where, again, so for fleshy at Quartz fans at home, if I was counting up my Noble Deeds points and I was stacking them in such a way where I had an, a hero nearby them with six, or in Usharan's case, four, I would have Feeding Frenzy. Where did this mean, picture go? Which would mean these 20... It, it keeps flicking in and out. Okay. These 20. These 20 would have an additional attack each. Oh, I know why. 
Why I can fix that in any minute, Joe. Uh, it's, it's a put the dice box back you up. Just can we, Joe? Yeah, put the dice box. You're all, you all look the same. All three of you. Put the we dice do. box back up. <laughs> the glare. I, I worked out what I did. I know what I did. <laughs> I, know, I know what I did, Kyle. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Uh, we're wounding you on threes. <laughs> oh, threes? Yeah. Oh, my God, that's many. One, two, three. Do, 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 do. Where is Ariola? We've done many. Where is the Ariola? <laughs> <laughs> it's a question for life. <laughs> You've done all right there, haven't you? I have done pretty good. It's that many. So 11 came out, which means you've, you've wounded me 25 of the times. What is your what is your rend? I'm using the terminology. Minus one. Minus one. So I have, oh my god, I have 25 four pluses. That's correct. It'll be right, isn't it? <laughs> Well, actually, might be all right. So, Zvi, Fia, Zex, Bacht, Zen, Zwolf, Dreisig. Yeah. And the damage one. Boom. I live with three weeks remaining. Taking 13. That was German for 13. Everyone's impressed in chat now. Oh my god, he speaks German. You have to with a friend like Brom. Right. <laughs> That was rude of you. That was very rude of me. I can only apologise. Except that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fight back now with Ariola because otherwise she might die. Yeah. And I'm going to hit the two things that haven't fought her yet. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that that's part of the tactical gameplay of Age of Sigma um, for everybody playing along at home. Uh, if you are in combat with two things, one of them has struck and you are near death, strike the thing that hasn't yet hit in the hopes to avoid being struck yourself and dying. It's it's fairly. It sounds like it's fairly basic knowledge, but it's one of those things that a lot of people forget to do. Um, I already did it here. I should have struck with the Royal Decapitator first. Yeah. But I didn't, because I wanted to do the Morberg Knights. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But so the reason I went for the Crypt Guard is if I'd gone for these, one of the two big guys in the middle, to fight the Dryads, I'm fairly comfortable I can kill the Dryads uh, with what's there. So if I'd gone for either of them, and the Lariel has the uh, Wardroth Beetle. What, the Wardroth Beetle, as we've previously established, can pick up about 15 of them when she was at her full health. Yeah. So I needed to just knock her down one or two. What's its damage now? So the Great Ant is only two. Cool. So I've done... Until she heals there. 2d6 in the Until hero phase. Until she heals 2d6 in the hero phase. And then next turn, if I don't kill her with the Crypt Horrors, which is what Liam's now going to try and remove, <laughs> um, if I don't kill her with the Crypt Horrors, next turn, she heals right back up, and then she just takes so I have Crypt Guard. I'm going to hit you with the, with the Antlers first. Yes. Because if I manage to kill one with the Antlers and I can wound one with the Talon, then potentially it could die on a six. That's so it makes correct. sense. So yes. four attacks with Antlers. I still, even though I'm wounded, I still hit you on threes. Yes. She's hit you two of the times. Okay, it's not bad. I am wounding you on twos with my antlers. <laughs> <laughs> I wounded you once! I wounded you once! It's minus two rends, you don't get a save, it's two DiMaggio's. Uh, okay, so ward saves of six plus. Have I very make rude. one, so Have very rude. one has taken a wound. So the previous five damage weapon has done one damage. Did you yep. say that wards are basically like, in, like invuln saves? I thought they were invuns, but apparently they're Furno Paints. Yeah, they're, oh. yeah. Ah. They feel no pains. Okay. That's I always. Because cool. you can yeah. turn up against mortals as well, which is nice. Is that how many wounds he's got left? As, yeah, yes. This is a problem. You're supposed to die to, to, the, to the horns. Well, Talon and Dwindling. And then yeah. the Talon will now have a go at you as well. Threes. Much more angry with, this, with, their, yeah. with their broken stick. And then fours. Yeah. Three this time. AP, or Ren, sorry, zero. So you have five plus saves. Sir. And these are on the Crypt Horrors. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Five up saves. Oh, I, did, I need to stomp you as well, don't I? Uh, yes, I took. I saved none. Okay, we'll stomp you first because oh, that's important, on. actually. No, I don't pass any of those. We'll stomp you first. Yeah. Two stomp. plus. Take D three. For three mortal wounds. Okay. So that kills the guy. So one's dead, and then the one has taken three wounds. So he's on one wound remaining. So if you now roll a six, you will pick up the last one. This dice here, I reckon. Do it, do it, do it. For you make sure that you make sure that magnet's on. Right. Do it for Chewie and the Ewoks, um, <laughs> and all the other puppets. <laughs> yeah, he does it. He does. <laughs> it's because I shouted like Chewie first. Exactly. That's why. <laughs> exactly. There we go. Cool. 
So, so that better. ability, uh, everybody at home, um, that works on everything, unless the specific model that you're targeting that on has something that says, if this model is a victim of an ability or attack that would cause it to be slain, it takes 2d6 wounds instead. So this one here doesn't yep. have that ability? It does not. So if I'd have done that one wound to that and rolled that six... That's correct. Dead. That is correct. Does Nagash still have the psychic power, the magic spell, yep. where you put a dice behind your back and you make your opponent choose? Uh, what, Hand of Dust? No. Uh, yes. He does. Hand of Dust. This, Kyle, is my favourite spell in the world, right? If you successfully cast a spell, you pick an enemy unit, I think, within three, right? And then if I'm the, ga if I'm the yeah. Nagash player, I, put, I get a dice in my hand, like that, and do this. And Josh picks a hand. Pick a hand. Pick a hand. What does that mean, Josh? If they pick the empty hand or container, the enemy model is slain. So, <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't lose. So he would have been fine. But basically, you walk up to any model with like a million wounds, and you do the ability, you go pick a hand. If they pick the empty hand, the hand of dust, you just lose the model, it's off the table. Yep. So he can walk up to Ariel, and he can go, pick a hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Nagash. Yeah. It's cool as shit. Yeah. And, so, and, and she's got the same thing with the Talon and the Dwindling, and a couple of others have got some things. Yeah. Now, there are things like with, uh, there, are, there are things like with Kragnos, for example, he has an ability that says, if he is the victim of this, he takes 2d6 mortal wounds instead. I love that. So importantly now, because these little ghouls have fought, Ariel will survive. She will. She's safe. Which is cool. Yeah. Now we're going to go into this central combat here. We you are. have to pick a unit to fight, and if that unit fails to kill the dryads, dryads they'll get to fight back. Yes. So I'm going to go with the Vargulf Courtier. Uh, am I? No, I'm going to go with Usharam. Do the big man! The reason why I'm doing that is because you could remove enough of these so that he can't get into combat. Correct. Uh, uh, are you a monster? I am. Would you like to do some sort of rampage? I would. I will do. Should I do one of the Flesh Eater Quartz ones? Does that cost a CP? No. no. It's just because you get it because you're a monster. Because uh, you're bigger than everyone else in it. I'm bigger than you! I will be honest with you all. One of the other... AOS armies I started making, and Josh is going to spit at me now, was an all Storm Drake dragon army. That's fine. Because I just love dragons. I think it's great. And my favourite thing when I had my high elves was people on big dragons. And then they took it away from elves and gave it to Stormcast. I'm going to do the raw. Rah! Yeah, you can't receive or. If I can't you receive it. or give. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, at the start of the combat phase, subtract one from the bravery characteristic of each enemy unit within three inches of this uh, unit until the end of the battle. Then roll 2d6 for each enemy unit within one inch of this unit. If the result is higher than the bravery characteristic of that unit, the strike last effect applies to that unit until the end of the phase. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, yeah. a defeatist role right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he can, in his hero phase, he can pick another one of my Courts of Delusion. So this is my, I get plus one to wound against your monsters, which... I'm not wound. a monster, I'm forest folk. Which you're not. Uh, but what I will do is I will... Um, it actually says forest folk. I kind of love that. I will do... <laughs> do do. <laughs> I'll do the Grand Tournament. I forgot to do this in the hero phase, because I've never played with this army. It basically means friendly flesh eater courts get plus one to hit if they made a charge at the same time. So it means that the courtier will get to plus one to hit. Uh, anyway, so he has... Herpes. He does. Hmm. So he has the scepter of the Carrion King. To be clear, I don't think the Vargolf court is going to be needed here. <laughs> 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 the scepter of the Carrion King. <laughs> what are you saying, Josh? Three ways to get ten tacks with the monstrous claws and fangs. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And his epicentre of delusion is 30 inches, which means all of the abilities that he does and all of the things you get for being, like, near a hero in the Flesh Eater Courts, 30-inch range for him. Good, isn't it? That's back to the days of AOS 1 when you had things like Vandas Hammerhand, who you was like, everything within 24 inches of me is immune to Battleshock. You mean in Age of Sigmar, cool models do cool shit? That's correct. Oh. Yeah. Uh, three attacks what hitting on threes. <laughs> Get two hits. Just the two, actually. Uh, we're wounding you on twos. Oh, are you? Yes. You did. It's minus two. That's good, because I have a five plus save. Cool. They're D3 plus three damage each. That's a problem. Yes. Okay, so that is six 
and that's 11 dead dryads. Okay, there's 10 in the unit. <laughs> yeah, they are, they are, <laughs> they are removed. Oh, you killed my, you sunk my battleship? Yeah. That's why I mean, I didn't think he was going to be needed. They're all dead now. Sorry, D I did say D3 plus 3, right? You not did, D6 yes. Plus three. In the War Hips chat, thank you to Lugubrious Crumhorn for 20 War Hips to memberships. That's 96 you're on. Thank you very much, Lugubrious Crumhorn. That is very, very kind of you. We're not going to get to 100, and you're going to get to 100. I've got, loads of, I've got loads of Super Chat questions, though, that I'm just waiting to ask. Well, we can, we'll, have to, we'll have to stop it a bit after a turn. Thank you, Buckshot81, for 10 Liam Dempsey memberships. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. That hurt my throat uh, a little bit. Yeah, so that's the end of my turn. Uh, and I get to fight back with nothing here, because that's all dead. Because it's all dead. And I've already fought over here. Yeah. So that's literally the end of the battle round. Yes. And here's another, here's the last important thing, because we've run through a single battle round tonight, chat. Here's the last important thing at the end of the battle round. All CP now goes to zero. Yes. Because if you haven't spent it, you lose it. Yep. And at the start of the next battle round, it starts again. With the same conditions. So, what we'll do is, we'll end the turn, we'll go into battle round two. Mr. I'll go to turn two. And actually, this is where we're going to have to really change our scoreboard up, because this is what would happen in 40k. Right? It would be my turn. Yes. But that's not what happens in Age of Sigma. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what happens now is we roll a dice yeah. for priority. Yes. If we, if we were going to do battle round two, but we're going to answer other questions instead. So I go on a two. Ah. <laughs> you get one. So I get priority. Yeah. Right? Priority simply means I get to choose whether I go first or not. No, no, you go first, I believe. Oh, no, I think you do. You choose. get the choice, don't you? I think. Yeah. I mean, in this situation, you wouldn't let me then go. No, I'd go first. Of yeah. course I would. Yeah. Which is why when somebody rolls a two or a one, you get really excited. You go, cool, I, I can, I can, I can. And this is the infamous Age of Sigmar double turn. Yeah. Um, which uh, I suspect we'll see some changes actually in the new, in the new edition. I think it might go. But I, no, I don't think it'll go. I think it'll modify it because I actually kind of like the concept of it. But at the moment, I think it's too much. Well, so that's, the, that's why I was talking about the asset management before, is if you extend your whole army forward and then your opponent goes twice in a row. You're in trouble, yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, priority roll, in the event of a tight... Uh, the winner pro has priority in that battle round and must decide who will take the first turn and who will take the second turn. So you could choose yeah. me so, to have a double turn or for you to have your first So what turn. I could choose to do right now is I could choose to let Mr. The Hipster go first. I wouldn't in this specific scenario because of the way the table is. Yeah. What I could do now is I could go, you get another go, yeah. and I'm going to wait. And then once you finish your go, it'll be my go. And then if I win the next priority, I could then double turn. And it, and it, so it's not like current 40k, this is why our scoreboard is going to be a problem for you tomorrow night, Carl. Um, but only because it will be changing colours, but it won't be relevant to whose turn it is. Yeah. But that's not a minor issue. It, well, it is a minor issue. It's not a major issue, so we won't worry about it too much. Uh, but that means that when we play tomorrow night, when Josh and, uh, and Joe play tomorrow night, um, it could have been that you go again and you do the infamous double turn that everyone raves about. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> I've got an idea of how I'm going to kind of tweak that anyway, so it's not really a big, big deal. Okay. I've got, I've got, I've had literally just looking at it and I was thinking about how I was going to do it. Yeah, we'll have to, maybe we'll have to play with it before we go live and see if we can make it work. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of like, when we go to bat round two, everything then carries on as, as we have done so far. So we select new secondary objectives because Josh would have achieved the secondary objective that he picked. His, I did. But not battle tactic. Battle tactic. Yeah. It is battle tactic. He, he picked his battle tactic, he would have, would have achieved it for some points. Not high scoring points, just like two points because you did it. That's it. And it's not like you get two points, but if you did it on a Wednesday, uh, and you're three inches away from a green terrain feature, you get four points, and plus one point, like it's none of that nonsense, it's just, you did it, you get two points. Job's yeah. given, right? Yeah. Um, so at the end of about round one, he'd have got some secondary points. I'm not sure what the primary is in this mission. We were literally just trying to learn the core mechanics, uh, and that was it, right? Yeah. So we then, you then roll off for priority. So, so turn one, bat round one, the player who deploys first go first. After that, for every battle round, you roll off for priority. Mm -hmm. At the end of each battle round, your CP goes to zero. I say you command, they are command points, aren't they? They are command points. Your command yeah. points go to zero, and then you generate them again. So the benefit I have to going second when I win priority is I gain an extra command point as well. Because the player who goes second gains an extra command point. Yeah. So there is a tactical benefit to going second by gaining a command point. Uh, with Age of Sigmar, the majority, I think, for most armies, is going to damage is going to be done in melee. So if you are like we are now, currently engaged across the centre of the battle grid, especially with the primary objectives, giving him a double turn is a very bad idea. Yeah, because I can now throw cause these guys. Move, <laughs> these guys move ten inches. Yeah. Well, so, even then. Yeah. So for, for example, Alariel heals two d six in her command phase. 
Yes. If I give you the next turn, I don't get a command phase. She's got three wins. You go, thanks, Liam. She's now going to die. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That is a simplified battle round of Age of Sigmar in the current edition. We're going to hope to get through most of the game tomorrow night, but I am conscious that Joe will be playing it for mostly the first time, and I don't want him going home at one o'clock in the morning and driving all that way. So we might have a hard stop tomorrow night as well. It'll be a bit later. And some of what we've talked through tonight and what we've gone through, we would have already gone through before we go live with Joe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it should be a bit faster, and we'll, we'll actually focus a little bit more perhaps on mission points and scoring. Um, but moreover, you just get to see Joe have fun with Josh tomorrow evening. That's kind of the point, right? We're yeah. literally here to hang out. It uh, might be really successful. It also might be an utter disaster. <laughs> it's Joe. It'll be a disaster, and that'll make it successful. Um, Good point. <laughs> when we get to the new version of Age of Sigma, when Age of Sigma Season Version 4, whatever you want to call it, comes out at some point this year, as announced at Adepticon, uh, what our, uh, our intent will be will be to bring Age of Sigma content to the channel. Now, I have been thinking about making it pre-recorded, but we might think about doing something live. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll, we'll canvas the audience and see what they think after we've had a bit of a taste yet, and we'll go from there. Uh, and we'll make our choices. I've always promised that it won't ever take over 40K content and be in replacement of 40K content. But of course, if 99% of our audience said, actually, we would prefer it if you did, then we'll do that. We'll be guided by you guys as well. But that's a simple battle round. I, I actually really like it. Like it's really, I feel like when you get the core bits down and you understand what some of the wordy rules do, it's going to be so much faster. You feel like you could now do the next battle round in like half an hour? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Aside, and the only aside from the dance, <laughs> dice rolling and all the that. The only thing that's going to slow me down is knowing what rules are on each data sheet. And that just comes with experience. Scroll. War scroll, sorry, yes. <laughs> 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 and that just comes with experience though, right? Like yeah, once yeah. you know that, that she can do a thing, you know that she can do a thing. And yeah. it's not a problem then. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I think some of the, you know, some of the real power in the armies as well comes from things like your, your actual uh, chapter, chapter tactics and yeah. stuff like that. Because that's Attachment not the- abilities, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And like, because like, this is one of the things, right, is like, that is missing from 10th edition Warhammer 40,000. There's so much flavour in this game right I now. Feel, I'm feeling that, actually, at the moment. And I, I, I would argue, actually, I'll be honest with you, I would argue that the amount of flavour that currently exists, for me, as a new Age of Sigmar player, mm. is a little daunting. I can absolutely see that. So when you talk about you have this ability and that ability and these spells and that spells and yeah, this yeah. thing that you can do and that thing that you can do, and then you can do this, I'm like, whoa, 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 that's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. And, well, and to be fair, if you had Stormcast... You have the starter army. They're a lot more simple. Sylvaneth are a little bit more of a cerebral um, uh, uh, kind of army. Okay. So like, you know, you're you're you've got the teleporting abilities. You've got the strike and fade abilities. You've got a lot of healing abilities. You've got a lot of uh, magic that is about keeping stuff alive and bringing stuff back and returning things like that, rather than doing outright damage which in either game system is more of a cerebral way to play, right? Because mm -hmm. if you think of like, what's it, like Necrons, not as they currently are, but as they were in like ninth, it wasn't really about doing loads of damage, it was about being annoying and standing yeah. back, at, back up and all that kind of thing. That's just a perfect army for Eddie, yeah. 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 Uh, so, <laughs> so Sylvaneth are a slightly more complex thing, because Stormcast are fairly simple. It's just like you have two choices. You have either a teleporty list or one that stands on objectives. The thing that I like, though, about what you've just said, so I, I haven't really read through the rules for the Sylvaneth a great deal. You've, yeah. made a, you've made a point of doing that, though, haven't you? Yes. Uh, but the uh, narrative I've started reading, and what I like about everything you've just said, teleporting into different woods, retreating back into the woods and healing, it seems to be at least very narratively driven. Yeah. And that I'm all for. And I think, chat, correct me if I'm wrong or if you disagree entirely, but every army has something about them when it comes to their core mechanics that is either unique to them or feels like it's different enough from a similar thing that it does in fact feel unique in and yeah. of itself. Whereas what you saw, for example, at the tail end of ninth, for example, was every codex that came out, you'd have five sub-factions, one of them would be the add three inches to your range and re-roll one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every, and everyone had a, if you're 12 inches away, it's minus one to hit. Yes. Every single army at some point had that. So Raven Guard, Elite Hawk, this, that, and the other. They all had it in 10th, whereas with, with, in 9th and 8th, and a little bit of that happens in 10th now. They've yep. done a better job, I think, but there's still mm -hmm. 
you know, we still got the, this is the minus one to hit at range, guys. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. These guys, the two armies that we've got here, the way my army works is uh, each of my characters, they do noble deeds because they think of themselves as being these noble noblemen, noble knights that are riding, riding out to defend the realm. Uh, if they cast spells, if they do prayers, or if they generate wounds on models and they kill models, they generate noble deeds points. The noble deeds points then key off bonuses in an aura around them for other Flesh Eater Courts things. Okay. And it's all based on, like some of them have just got like incredible names. When you look at the army, right? Ravening Horde of Ghouls. Yeah. And then you look at the abilities. I love that shiny gold book. It's so great, isn't it? It's so cool. The Slaves to Darkness one is the same, except it's like three times the size of this book. <laughs> um, so, Courts of Delusion. The Royal Hunt, Crusading Army, Defenders of the Realm, The Grand Tournament, The Feast Day. They're just, this army feels as fluffy as it's possible to feel for the Flesh Eater Courts, and they have some absolutely fantastic background that's in here. They're just, they're absolutely brilliant, and I love them very much. One of the things I, one of the things I will say, chat, genuinely, if you're thinking about AOS for the first time, and I see this a lot on, online, a lot of what I see is Age of Sigmar lore isn't as good. I see that loads everywhere. It's, yeah. And every time I've picked up a battle tome and I've read the narrative part of that battle tome, mm. I have been thoroughly engrossed in that narrative. Yeah. And so far, I've, start, I've started reading the Sylvaneth very, very recently because I knew you were coming. Uh, I've read Ideneth Deepkin and um, Osiak Bone Reaper's narrative in the, just, in the, just in the battle tomes. Not actually dedicated stories, not like Black Library novels or audio, book, audio books or whatever. Just what's in the, in the battle tome. Some of it is grim and dark mm. and really cool. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not this like floaty pink fluff, like flesh, like, not flesh eater courts, uh, Osiok Bone Reapers collect a bone tithe. And if they rock up to your village and you don't have the correct bone tithe because not enough people have died, people are literally sawing their arms off in the street mm -hmm. to hand it over to hope that that's enough. They go away and leave them alone. That sort of stuff. Deepkin is, they, they, they come ashore to harvest souls. Yeah. It's a, like the narrative is, is, it's really terrifying in places. I, I, if you get the chance, grab a cheap battle token <coughs> from somewhere. Even if you buy like an old one from perhaps the last edition off of, um, off of yeah. eBay or something and read Season the narrative. Two. That edition two. Yeah, read the narrative for it. Because edition one, it is a little bit of, look, I mean, look, the see, Age, of, Age of Sigmar edition one didn't land well. <laughs> no. It, it didn't. Um, people didn't care for it at all. Um, and people didn't really understand it. And I get that. I get it because it was replacing something that was beloved by many, but wasn't making any money. <laughs> so if you wanted uh, fantasy battles to stay around, you should have spent more money on it. Because um, paint was outselling the entire model range. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, so yeah, of course it wasn't going to stay. Age of Sigma was to change it, right? And no, it didn't land very well. There was a lot of confusion at the beginning of what are Stormcast Eternals? Are they people? Are they automatons? What are they? No one knew. Well, the none, narrative now is really cool. The narrative for them now is exceptional. And that has, oh, that has been there, slowly developing from day dot. Yeah. They are living, breathing people that are in the suits of armor. They're not just, because none of them had bare heads. That was why people were just like, they just got a mask. So it's just a soulless automaton. Uh, and they're just space marines anyway. It's like, mm. no, there's a, there's a fundamental difference between what a stormcast eternal is and what a space marine is. Um, and like, you know, there's just, I think, I think the thing with the AOS law is at times the good guys, so like the Stormcast Eternals, they introduce more noble bright than some people are comfortable with over the grim dark of what people think they desperately want for everything. But it means you end up with a setting where there's absolutely no hope whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas in Age of Sigma, until now, AOS 4 with the Sigma lied thing, all coming thing, there has been a little bit, there's been a, like, there's, there's a glimmer of hope that... that, yeah. that I'm actually getting really into the AOS law. I think yeah. it's really cool. I, yeah. Uh, the different realms and stuff like that. I'm, I'm super, but I like, I like my fantasy stuff anyway. Anywho, Mr. The Kyle, I'm aware that you said there was lots of questions and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots and lots of questions and stuff? Yeah. Fire away. So I'm going to start on the War Hipster chat. Uh, Mr. Shy Guy, thank you for, well, welcome to Battle Hipster, as it says in... Uh, Mr. Warhipster's chat. Uh, Lugubrious Crumpon, thank you for another 10 Warhipster memberships. 
Thank you, lugubrious come home. Yeah. Over 100 for you now, look at that. Is it over 100? Yeah. You are, do you want me to tell you how many you're on? Yes, please. That you are on 107 new members. Yeah, look at that. Seven. 107 of the final. Well done, chat. You're all amazing. You're very, very generous, guys. Yeah. Thank you. And then going into the Dempsey chat, Morty Hammer, thank you for the super chat. said, The Last Jedi does not exist in my Star Wars universe. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> That's because it was written by Reddit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave Meekin, thank you for the super chat. said, Can we make the hipster a regular? Once a month, maybe. Looking forward to tomorrow's stream already. Definitely play AOS on this channel. Um, Once a month. I mean, I'm okay with it. I'd have him here all the time. He can live in the studio. Josh is like, logistically, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> hey now. I have to get here by train. So if anybody wants to cover a season ticket where we get a fast, then we can do it. That, don't. They would do that, by the way. Yeah. Well, I'm just, you know, that I leave that in chat's hands. Okay. Yeah. Grim Witchbone, thank you for the super chat, said, something I really like about Battle Tones is they have paint guides in them. Well, at least the Soul Blight one does, do they? Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, they, they all do. do. They all really? do. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and they're quite in-depth as well. They're not like... like Battle again. Tomes are what codexes should be. Je like, I, I say do that. Do you remember in, I think it was 6th or 7th, I think they did, like, the codexes did have... So up to here is all lore, right? Then you go into your typical artwork section, where they show them in their glorious beauty, which is better, and there's lots of it as well, by the way. There's lots and lots and lots of it. And then once you've gone through the artwork section, lots and lots and lots of it, you go into painting guides. They've started to bring these in in 10th edition for 40K, and I'm all for it, yeah. but there's not a, as much in there as I would like. But painting guides here, so you get two pages on this one, plus two more pages on this one, so that's four pages, plus more six pages. It's six pages. So six pages well. of painting guide in every, in every battle team. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and they give you everything from, um, Flesh, wings, uh, different styles of weapons and different ways to paint those weapons. There's four different weapon colours there. Yeah. Uh, they give you uh, hair all the way through the different like highlighting stages, the faces, different branch styles, light bark, foliage. It's They're very good. Well, you yeah. need to have a look at these tones. They're though. very, very yeah. good. The Flesh Once... Eater Quartz one has, there's four different Grand Quartz in here, so your Space Marine chapters for those of you at home. Uh, Morgaunt, Hollow Morn, Blister Skin, and uh, Gristlegore. It's got a guide for all four of them types of skin. But then it has alternative different, two all different uh, alternative skin tones, two different ways to paint wings, different way to paint Vargul for uh, how to do chivalric heirlooms and relics, brackets, bones, uh, bruised flayed flesh, fine embroidered mantles, brackets, rotten flayed flesh. There's, there's just so much about this book to like. And then once you've gone through your painting guides, you've got your forces, it gives you your uh, allegiance abilities, your battle traits, your enhancements, your command traits, your artifacts, your spells, your glades, which is like your chapters essentially, your path to glory, which is like a narrative version. I guess it's like crusade, but less admin heavy path to glory, isn't it, I think? Yeah. You've got battle plans, so you've got missions based around your specific army. You've got your detachment abilities, which is war scroll, war scroll battalions. And there's lots of different ones. Match play, ground strategies, and battle tactics. Core, but there's there's loads. These things are incredible for yeah. an army. They are. I mean, this is the Stormcast Eternals one, right? So there is painting guide. You have how to paint all of the hammers of Sigmar, the gold guys, for those of you at home. Uh, mm. Weapon effects, well, fur cloaks, files, glass, and gem-like artifacts. Shield designs. So, you know, if you want to add a little bit of extra spice to it. Yeah. Plumes, prosecutor wings. Three different types of beast flesh, feathers, facial details, scales, skin <laughs> See, patterns. I just said in the chat, because they were talking about how like the codex should have all painted out. I, I I actually always like I know that YouTube and Google exist and stuff, but the fact that they actually have it in the book that you've paid for, in a nice little little bundle. It, say for example, for your kids, right? And mm. like, they're like, oh, I'm really interested in the Stormcast. You buy them this book. They've now got access. They can look through it and go, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I 100%. want to paint like this. But, but, but that's where, it, that's where it, it starts and ends. If it? we take it a step yeah. further as well, though, Kyle, I feel like, especially with 40K, I don't know about Age of Sigmar. I don't know how it's been over the course of the last three years of this, or two and a half years of this edition. But 40K specifically, I feel like we are, as like a slow barge turns in the water, we're slowly moving towards what is probably going to end up being a digital-only core rule set. And the reason for that is... I think people are eventually going to get sick and fed up of buying a set of rules, whether that be data cards or codexes, only to find that two weeks after it's released, it's out of date because yeah. they've updated it because they found there's a balance issue or there's an issue with numbers or they've misprinted it because apparently GW are completely incompetent at proofreading anything they release in 40K. 
right? So people are a bit sick of that. Now, what we've all said, and we've said this a lot on the channel recently, the Command Bunker on the 40K app is phenomenally good. And I stand by that. It's incredible. It's amazing. But that means that the rules in my codex are kind of pointless because I don't know if they're in date. So the amount of times we've done something and, chat, and chat's gone, mm, that got updated. I did it where? And if, and if, I, yeah. if I go through the PDFs, I have to, oh, which, which PDF is it in? Whereabouts is it? What page is it on? But if I go in Command Bunker, it's already updated. So considering we're probably going to be moving towards a predominantly digital set at some point in the, in the maybe near but probably distant future, I feel like the, what, the, the one thing they can do with codexes and battle tomes is really fill it out with lore and painting guides and cool missions and narrative things to do. Stuff that isn't impacted or affected by balance changes and updates. Fluff. Mm. Fluff, exactly. Loads fluff. of fluff. You know, An army book. I, I've, I've said to GW on numerous occasions behind closed doors, stop putting points in codexes, it's pointless. Excuse the, excuse the pun. Dark Angels Codex got released to us in the Deathwing Assault box. We used the new points in the Deathwing Assault box for all of our content um, before it was released to the general, before the codex was released to the general public, because the app doesn't update until the main codex is released to the general public. Mm. The main codex got released to the general public, and Deathwing Knights points were completely different to what they are in the codex, to, yeah. this, to the tune of forty or fifty points, which means that I was playing with a one to one hundred and fifty point penalty for the whole time we were previewing the book. Stop putting points in the codex. Mm. Just use the app. That, yeah. That's my honest opinion, and I think the battle times do a good job of having decent amount of content in, even without the War Scrolls. Yeah. I don't know if the War Scrolls get much amendment after the, the Some game. Some of them do, occasionally. So there was one change, for example, to uh, the one that I can remember off the top of my head, is that Vanquishers, there was Stormcast Eternals with the big swords, um, they now have a two-inch range. Instead of? A one-inch range. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a minor change, mm. but one that you would probably be annoyed at if you found it. Yeah, and there's some things like... Um, I mean, look, we're at the we're at the tail end of an edition. Yeah, that's a change that's happened in the last in the last update. Which so it's like really the balance tweak. It's a balance tweak from like okay. three weeks ago, and I don't anticipate you know that that's a some of you we know like to play an old edition. That's it. Well, that, what I like about that though is that you like you've literally pulled a single update out, mm. right? And that like forty k every time there's a balanced data slate. Yeah, I mean there was, there are some there's more. I just I only ever look at I only ever look at the factions I care about. Yeah, of course. So I look okay. at Stormcast Eternals, I look at Sylvaneth, and I look at Flesh Eater Courts now. Cool. Um, How we going, Kyle? <clears throat> Dave B, thank you for the super chat. I said, question for the War Hipster, what rule would you like to see improved in the next edition and what rule needs left well alone? Awesome work, you three. Ah. Oh. What rule changed for the new edition, what rule left alone? Um so I hope double turn stays. Ooh, controversial. Okay. I really like double turn because I think I think I think it adds a layer of it, it adds a really tactical layer to the game. People say it as something that's really annoying to have to deal with, and it is. But if you plan for it tactically, you can actually turn it very much in your favour. You, would you just leave it exactly as it is, though, or would you tweak it? I would keep it the same as it is. Okay, interesting. Because I think I think at this point you either change it for the worse, or you get rid of it. Because now it's like you you make the priority roll off. The person who wins can decide, as you said. Uh, if it's a tie, it's the person who went. Um, it, it basically means you can't get a double turn. I was because I was curious as to whether like the person who went first in the previous battle round gets plus one to their roll to mm. to reduce the risk of a double turn. Yeah, no, it's, so if it's a tie roll, it's, yeah. um, okay. it, it just basically says... So you'd leave oh, yeah, that one alone, but if you were going to change something for the new edition... Um, probably, I would probably shake up, not how they're done, but I would shake up battle tactics. Okay. Because um, I, I, like, I hate se secondaries in 40k. I despise it. I didn't like it in ITC in 8th edition. I don't like, didn't like it that ITC in 8th edition became 9th edition, and I don't like how the cards are drawn now. The reason I don't like them is because none of them are particularly simple, and some of them are completely in, uninteractive, and many of them are not fluffy to how the game is played. That's, that's why I don't like it. It's not the when people say they dislike the Maelstrom, that they go, oh, it's because you, know, you draw something that you can't do. I was like, that's what happens in war. Yeah. <laughs> you might get told, we need you to do this thing. It's like, 
We physically can't. We're under fire. So yeah, fine. Is what it is. You know, that's part of the that's part of the narrative of the game, right? The reason I dislike the way the 40k stuff is done is it can at times encourage you to not interact with your opponent ever mm -hmm. if you're playing in a competitive. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. So I think there should be I think there should be objectives in the tenth edition thing that are like kill the slay the enemy's warlord with your warlord. Or challenge, okay. Yeah, and who cares if it gives you fifteen points? It's hard to do. Yeah. Okay. Is what it is. So, same thing with the battle tactics. I think battle tactics at times in this edition, and I think most people will agree with me as well in the chat. For those of you who are experienced AOSs. There are some battle tactics that can be uninteractive, and there are some armies that have battle tactics that are uninteractive because it's a fluffy way for them to be, but it's kind of, it's not, it's not interactive. And that's a problem when you have two people playing a game and I can win it by not actually playing with you. Yeah. And that's not cool. And there's nothing I want more than for you to play with me. Exactly. So I would maybe I would maybe tweak battle tactics just a little bit more to make them more encouraging yeah. you to play with the opponent. But I wouldn't change the whole I pick one and I have to achieve it this turn type thing. Yeah, okay. I That's really love that as a system. I think it's a I think it's a very good system. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Cool, cool. And then thank you who for the 50 gifted memberships, Kyle. Christos Margarita Palos, thank you for a super chat. So oh. glad to see Liam playing AOS. I was also casual in AOS in third edition and want to, be, well, want to be more involved in fourth. Should I learn more about the game now or wait for fourth? Honestly, I, I, my best advice would be wait. Like I said, the language that they're using in a lot of the articles mm. both concerns and excites me at the same time. Now, it only concerns me because it's similar language to what we saw with the launch of 10th edition, which turned out to be, in my personal and humble opinion, a bit of a car crash. Um, that being said, the design studio that's making this game, as we said earlier, is a different design studio. So I'm holding out some positive hope that actually they're taking on board what it means to make things a little bit simpler, a little less confusing, because you do have things in multiple different generals' handbooks, etc. now, and they've gone, how do we make this less scattered? And maybe they've actually simplified, actually simplified it down. And, and they, they are purposefully, I think, avoiding saying simplified, not simple, because I think they'll be ripped a new one if they actually, you know, say that. Um, so I actually think that, I'm actually hopeful that the design studio involved in this is, is doing what they're telling us they're trying to do with the game. Now, I've spoke to GW about new AOS, uh, and when they announced it last week, I did tell you guys that we, we did, Joe and I did know it was coming. Um, and the, the, the info I've been given directly makes me feel positive about what they're doing. Now, I, they've not told us me anything about rules, they've not shown me anything, I can't say anything like that. I, all I can say is, it sounds like they've playtested the arse out of this, yeah. and it, it sounds very positive. That being said, if they are going to make a bit of a change, we're three editions in now, I can see there being some big sweeping changes to actually shake it up and make it feel like a new edition. Mm -hmm. uh, what they've specifically said on their articles, if you read them, is that three editions, it's just kind of grown in three editions. So we're gonna see a bit of a reset. Now they're indexing everything, which would indicate to me it's quite a reset in places because they're indexing everything. They've said they're indexing everything. Because they're indexing everything, wait until the new edition comes. Unless you're able to keep casually playing as you are now, just wait. Buy cool models, buy Vanguard boxes, buy cool models, build cool models, and then wait mm. until the rules come out. Because it, I, I, you could spend two months learning this edition, and then we're in, what, March now, nearly April, and then say June, July time, they go, here's a new edition, you go, oh, okay, it's, it's actually really different. Yeah, but then similarly, simultaneously, all experience is good experience. True, yeah. So, you know, it is a... It is a is a mostly melee focused army. So if you want to learn how to use melee in the game, by all means, jump right in. I just, you know, there's things like, I wouldn't say at this point, start a Skaven army. Well, probably no, don't do that. And I would probably say, be wary of a Stormcast army. I don't think anything's going to go. No, I agree. But I think stuff's going to get replaced. And you'll, you'll just be a little bit disappointed if you get, if Liberators, because it's not like they're going to go on a different base size, all Stormcast are on 40 mil bases anyway. If there is new Liberators, if you look at the new Liberators and go, they look great compared to the potato-y ones. <laughs> well, it's it's like going from a Space Marine to a Primaris, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? yeah but exactly. if you look at stuff that's been released recently, so if, for example, you wanted to start a, um, they're not called Empire, the Cities of Sigmar army, yeah. that's safe. Go for it. Yeah, jump in. 100%. Jump in. 
Because you know, <clears throat> even if it, if it's not the even if the gaming side isn't one hundred percent there yet, and we're not one hundred percent sure on how it's going to be, as a hobby, which is the other massive part of this, of course, which people sometimes forget about. Building and painting all of these models is an absolute dream. They are so damn cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they will be unlike anything you've done if you're experienced with 40K. Uh, the closest thing, as I have kind of experienced recently, has been the new Crute. Mm. They're very close in kind of <coughs> aesthetic and style and detail. Well, people were asking us if they actually thought the design studio for AOS models made the Crute models. <laughs> the design studios, the design studios, but you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for the donor, you're a legend. Uh, Trout, thank you for the five good memberships. Uh, here's Horace, there's Horace. Everywhere's Horus. Everywhere's Horus. Thank you for the super chat. Said hipster can top and tail with Joe. Yes. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris Doss, thank you for another. Thank you for another super chat. Said, what does War Hipster think of the Golden Demon winners? The Slayer Sword winner maybe want to start a vampire army. Uh, I think the Slayer Sword winner is an unbelievable piece of art. It is. We were um, talking about it before the stream. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's, and 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 like it's. This sounds like I'm doing it a disservice. It's actually really simple. Because he's, it's, it's not the, the it's Kado Ezekiel, and he's done loads of stuff to it, and he's put it in this beautiful, beautiful um, setting. But the model itself, it's almost just the way it comes out of the box, the one that's intact. The one that's only even done a lot more work to, but I think that speaks testament to how great. His um, concept is more. His concept is, yeah. is flawless and the execution is flawless. Yeah, 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 of course. I think it speaks again to the quality of the AOS models. That oh, you can absolutely. Take something out of, like, you can take a model like Kato Ezekiel and you can be inspired enough to do something like that. Unbelievable. Work. Even the Banshee coming out the bottom is basically out of box. Yes, exactly. It's the, yeah, so. It just looks incredible. Um, yeah, I thought they were unbelievable. And I, I thought it was a really strong, really, really strong stable of Golden Demon winners. The standard year. was super high. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we want. We want yeah. to see the standard be super high because uh, it should be. Especially for Golden Demon, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, K47, thank you for the super chat. I said, you guys are making me want to start AOS. Looking yeah. at Seraphon or vampires, what have you done to me? I mean, we've enlightened you. We have opened we've, your we've eyes. We've enlightened you. Yeah. Captain Mannering, save your super chat. And I was going to bring this up, but I didn't want to. Josh just hit 60,000 subscribers. Congratulations. Did I? I? You've what just were you on hit you came here? 60K. 59,999. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this morning. Uh, I'm on 60,025. Look at that. So this morning I was on 60,000, not 60,000, 59,900 uh, and something. Like we're 20. not going to talk about what we're on. We won't talk about that. Celebrate good, good times. times. Come, Come on. on. We won't talk about what I'm on. 60,025. Jeez. And then jumping into the Warheads, the chat. Uh, thank you, Bill Tong Boo. Nice. Great name. He's Member a... for 21 months. Uh, it says, AOS, perfect models for 40k Git Bash. Love you, Josh. Listen. Listen, you. It's 100% plausible for some of them. No, no, no it is have never seen, acceptable. Have you, have you, have you never seen, acceptable. Have you seen all the Seraphon fucking <laughs> Votan like, kick about all the time? Yes. But, I don't get it. I wanted to turn my. I, I, I wanted to. I was thinking about turning Silverneth into an Eldar Wraith army. Yeah. So they're like Exodites. Yeah. James Mathias, thank you for it. 20 Warhipster <laughs> members. Warhipster memberships. You've got more members. That puts Josh on 127 for the year. What evening. are we on, Kyle? James. We are on 85. They're fucking slacking tonight, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Swearing. James, thank you for another <laughs> five Warhipster memberships. That puts Josh on 130. This guy's like your John McCardle. <laughs> <isn't laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredibly generous of him. Honestly, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Give, give some to Liam now. No, 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 no. no. He'll be Your sad point. otherwise. It's about Mr. The Josh tonight. It's all right, I'm going to turn off all his memberships tomorrow so we get more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just delete his channel. Yeah. <clears throat> channel? <laughs> right, talking about tomorrow night. Is that everything, Mr. The Carl? Yeah. We're up to date. Good, right, cool. For now, yeah. Talk about tomorrow night, right? Uh, so, tomorrow daytime. We're back in the studio at some point in the morning, uh, and then Mr. The, Mr. the Hipster and I are going to be doing a pre-recorded podcast, pre-recorded talk show, that will be going live on my channel at some point in the near future once I've edited it um, for you guys to watch. We're going to be talking candidly, we'll be talking seriously, there'll be less joking around, there'll be some serious questions. Uh, I've got a bunch of questions from the Only Thanes, because we go Thanes Unfiltered, they can ask you anything they want, and I've got a whole bunch of those that they've been asking over the weekend. Um, so you can look forward to that in the future. In terms of more content this week, tomorrow night at 7.30, the, channel, the channels go live again. Yes. Because I said, hey, whilst you're here, we might as well multi-stream. And it seemed to have mostly worked fine. I, I personally have not come across any problems. 
Okay, perfect. So we're good. So, uh, we'll so we're going to do the exact time. same thing again tomorrow night, right? Which means tomorrow night at 7.30, it'll be another live game of AOS. Joe will be here learning it instead uh, with Josh. Kyle will be on the deck. I'll be floating around the studio because otherwise Josh can't back, go back to my house and go to sleep. That's true. So that's, a, that's a problem for him. You're the referee. So I'll be floating around anyway. Now, the intent is to try and get a game in. I believe... Joe's bringing his Soul Bright Grave Lords. He is. And Mr. the Hipster is here with his uh, Stormcast. You'll see two different armies and how they kind of work and the different things that they can do. Now, warning right now, we might only get three odd turns, four odd turns in. It's a possibility. What I'm not going to do is let Joe drive home at half past midnight, one o'clock in the morning when he's got an hour and 20 minute drive just so he can finish a game off. No way I'm letting him do that because that's irresponsible of me as his boss, to be quite frank. So we'll probably have a half to 11 o'clock cut off, but we're going to have fun, chill out, drink some tea, Drink some, well, you don't drink tea, do you? No. 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 It burns, strange. it burns my mouth. It's strange. We have to let it cool down normally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that was probably my mistake. <laughs> so that would be tomorrow evening. And then on Wednesday, Mr. J Mr. Hips will be going home and we'll return to normal. Yes. And are you do are you streaming on Wednesday when you I get might, home? I might do. Depends what time. Okay. I'm well, there you go. There might be a hipster stream, but you get a bonus one tomorrow night from Mr. The Hipster channel anyway, because you don't normally stream on Tuesdays. I don't We're going to push it out to both channels, right? For my lot, who let yourself get a beat in memberships tonight? That's all I'll say about that. Anyway, you people have been incredible tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching on our channel, if you're watching from the Great Hall and you haven't already, go and join the over 60,000 people that have subscribed to Hipster because, it, the, quite honestly, Games Workshop's painting tutorials after Peach and Duncan left went dog shit. Even and these are like they used to be. These I'd, are now good. I'll be honest, I'd argue that they're, they're better than the Duncan ones anyway. Well, you're wrong. So now, what, Mr. The Hipsters are the new GW ones? No. The, oh, in that case, you're fine. You're right. <laughs> no. I thought you meant the well, new GW ones even, be, even before I'm... I thought met... you were just being really critical of no, me no, there no, for no, a minute. Even, even I was like, before, this is bold. Even before I met Liam, I, I knew about your videos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, probably, from, in my personal opinion, especially if you are the average hobbyist, probably the best painting tutorials out there on the YouTube. Because, it, yeah, not because of the quality, but because of just how approachable it is. <laughs> Yeah, the quality is terrible. Because the quality is awful. If you're now. a shit painter, watch <laughs> Joe's videos. <laughs> yeah, Joe's videos, not Josh's. Oh, anyway. sorry. Yeah. Can I iterate the same thing back? If you're watching on my channel, because you are watching on my channel, if you're watching this in on demand, because it will be left on on demand, please do go and subscribe to Mr. Liam Dempsey. Just search Liam Dempsey. You've probably got the, there's probably a tag or something. You've got your links as well in the thing, haven't you? Not on your one, I haven't, no. Are they not? I, I didn't take that liberty. I'll That's put, entirely I'll up put to them you. Put them in if they're not there. But please do subscribe to Liam, because, you know, he's a good dude. When I made the video description, I didn't put any of my links in your specific video description. I don't like to take that liberty or make any assumptions. That's, that's uh, fair. We're like, we're like hipsters, don't know, but half the size. But twice as monetized. <laughs> <laughs> well, not according to tonight, 120 something members. No, no, that's true. <laughs> Guys, you've been really, really generous. You've been me. amazing. Thank you very much. I don't expect the same thing tomorrow. I so, do. I do. Well, for, for you. No, for you. Oh, for me. Yeah. Oh. Double it. Anyway, uh, you've been incredible. I think that's everything. Is that everything, Mr. The Kyle? Are we good? Are we happy? I'm happy. You're amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.